Welcome to the most spectacular event on the IFSC circuit. Chamonix, surrounded by dramatic mountains, including the 4,810 meter Mont Blanc. Well, it's a focus point of climbers and thrill seekers, and it's time for the IFSC lead finals. My name is Mac Room, and I am joined in the commentary box once more. And for you guys at home watching, one of your favorites, Stasha Gayo. Stasha, welcome back. Hi, Matt. It's good to be back again, especially here in Chamonix. Yeah, we have that incredible view in the background. Now, before we start, let's check out the action from earlier on today, the semi-finals. And it was a pretty special semi-finals. As we can see, lots of action. Hannes Puman there not quite getting through. Futaba Ito tried hard, didn't make it. Sam Avizu, he did get through. Nine men and eight women have made it this far. Laura Rogero there, full of excitement as she topped out her route. Luca Potigia as well, and that man is back, Adam Ondra, his first lead comp of 2022. We saw falls, dramatic moments, plenty of action, and Alex Magos, well, he didn't make it through, and we'll explain why, and that's the reason. <laughs> Grabbing the quick draw by accident, and he was deemed to have not topped out the route. Drama happened in the semi-finals, and we'll be chatting through some of those moments in a couple of seconds. Brooke Rabatou, well, she topped out, and that lady there, Yanya Gambra, can she be stopped? We will find out here this evening. So, Stasha, that semi-finals, we saw lots of dramatic moments going on, including that Alex Magos moment. So, look, explain to us, for all those Alex Magos fans out there, you're not really allowed to do that to a quick draw, are you? Yeah, you're, the quick draws are there only to clip, and he, like, hung on it a bit. Well, if you're just joining us, welcome to Chamonix. That is the lead wall. And yeah, Alex Mega. So he slipped as he was clipping. Yeah, and then he kind of helped himself a bit to prevent the fall. And he hung on the quick draw. He pulled on it like he applied force. And therefore, you're not allowed to do that. It helped you prevent the fall or advance. So therefore, he had to be stopped at the hole that he added with the other hand. So it was a shame for Alex, but they are the top nine athletes making it through due to count back. Hamish MacArthur and Sam Avazu in their first final. So whatever result they get, it will be a PB for them. Adam Ondra, he's back, as I said, his first comp for 2022. And he hasn't competed in Chamonix since 2019. So I'm sure he's enjoying being in this mountain scenery once again. And Stasha, Taisai Homer, I mean, he won last week. He's going to be excited for this comp today. Yes, he seems to be in a really good shape. And uh, yeah, the field is just so strong this year. It's incredibly difficult to be amongst the top 10 and, uh, well, to be in the top eight and be in the finals. Um, you can already see in qualifications that um, so many people vary from making semis to falling out and here you have the best of the best um, some of them are more consistent some of them re less but anyways I think it's going to be a, a, an interesting battle tonight with all these people absolutely and that is the top eight women and I know Stash you'd like to be in that field <laughs> but there are some very good lead climbers up yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. It's like with a little training of lead, you can't get far. <laughs> <laughs> Bouldering season was really long this year, so yeah. It is. Well, Stasha, I know you're going to be back. Oh, that is Mont Blanc in the background. You can see just the uh, white-capped snowy mountains behind, 4,810 meters. And that is the Place du Mont Blanc, which is packed with people here. Stasha, you walked through that crowd on the way to the commentary box. <laughs> What's the atmosphere like in the stadium right now? It's actually pretty chill. The people are sitting on the ground. They have their drinks and snacks. They're ready to watch the climbing. <laughs> um, yesterday, also, at speed, it was pretty, pretty packed. Um, I like you couldn't even see where the crowd ends from the, from the front rows. Uh, but it's, it's good to see that climbing attracts so many people uh, in this city. It does indeed. Well, that's our two routes. The women's on the right, the men's on the left. And here come the athletes onto the stage, <laughs> Mia Kremple. <laughs> Mia a bit lost, doesn't know where to go. <laughs> well, she hasn't made a finals in a bit, so oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, she needs to be Welcome reminded. Welcome back. <laughs> so Mia Kremple joins her teammate in the finals. We'll introduce her in a second. And then after her, Jessica Piltz is back as well. And look, how unlucky is Jessica Piltz? She Piltzbreed? doesn't have a great season start. <laughs> so she slipped in Innsbruck because the wall was on the direct and I don't know, the organizers probably didn't count that in. And uh, 
it was just super difficult to fight the friction and uh, well she took a an early fall then she slipped again in semi-finals in, in Villar and uh, well now she's here let's hope she does not slip tonight it seems to be good weather <laughs> yeah can she put it all behind her and put in a decent run I know she'd like to well next up Brooke Rabatu enters the stage <laughs> from behind the curtain yeah she, she timed out in semis right and she didn't get the top correct yeah she did i'm glad you said that because we were thinking uh, myself and emil in the commentary box and laura as well no yeah uh, laura, oh, no, laura, no, laura, laura was top. different yeah, yeah. yeah okay. but yeah brooke timed out we thought it might be a clip quick draw thing it wasn't it was just a time yes so uh, she'll try to climb a little quicker, hopefully, yeah. here this evening. <laughs> yeah, they, you have some girls that, it's usually women, I don't know why, it's like, they just climb really slow, they take their time, they rest. But since, well, we have only six minutes to do the route, you have to speed it up. That is true, and we will keep an eye on that. The clock will be on the screen, so we'll be able to, uh, or you'll be able to see <laughs> how fast they're climbing. Next up, Shian So, she always pushes Yanya. Will tonight be her breakthrough moment for 2022? Can she get a gold? Though Yanya seems in an incredible shape. I think she's stronger than she's ever been. I mean, she skipped the whole bouldering season to focus on lead. She she told us she's like, oh, well, I'm more psyched to be focused fully on lead. I don't want to do bouldering anymore this season. But she is a beast, she, really. She really and is. And the only t time she doesn't top is either the route is brutal, which she really likes, or she slips. <laughs> she slipped on a quali route, I think in Villar, yeah, on the yeah. quali route. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, everyone slips. Also, Yanya does sometimes. Yeah, and then she didn't slip after that. <laughs> yeah. Laura Rogera is on stage. She had a bit of a dramatic entry into this final. She topped out, and then she got put back because, uh, I can't remember what it was, but she got put back, and then it was, oh, she st the, st stood the, the bolt. bolt yeah. yeah, and then uh, she appealed it, got put back up to the top, so. <laughs> Yeah, but we don't have the bolts covered for every bolt, I mean, especially in qualities, they didn't have it. So it was really tricky to like not step on the bolt. Um, but yeah, hopefully now they're all covered. <laughs> Natsuki Tani, Yanya Gambre, and then Natalia Grossman. And if you're, uh, yeah, we've got some interesting content with Natalia. Later, you can follow us uh, on the Facebook pages as well at the IFSC to watch that. Well, that's the women, eight of them. And they leave the stage. Next nine men will be introduced. As Jessica Piltz comes out last there. She leaves the stage. So that's our women's finalists. They will be going for just three podium places. They got whittled down from 26 in the semi-final. And now just eight are left for us here. But nine men in the final stash. Yes. Explain a bit of that for uh, us. Well, we had five men fall in 36 plus, but out of those uh, five, four of them topped both qualification routes. So due to comeback, Hannes Puman was left out and the others had to share the place. So four of them are sharing sixth place. Therefore, they all have to get in because they're equal in their results. So, well, if more shared sixth place, they all would get in. So technically, yeah. <laughs> Now, Stasha, we're watching the women's observation, which took place before. Natalia is sketching the route. That's allowed, right? It's been a while in my uh, lead <laughs> career, so... Uh, but the athletes are allowed to make a little sketch of that. They can take it back, they can think yeah, about obviously it. Obviously it is, since she's doing this. I can't say it's not allowed, because I think that probably is. But yeah, there was something about sketching. Yeah, you're not allowed to sketch the route before the observation. So if you're at the venue before for some reason or it's allowed for you to be there, you're not allowed to have that sketch with you in the in the zone. On the observation you can and uh, the coaches also get their like official picture with official numberings. So you know uh, for appeal reasons to, to like which hole which holds which value. Um, therefore, yeah, it's allowed to, to have a sketch of your own if you want to make it. Uh, but before that, it's not allowed. There we go. The athletes, this is a, a format where they get to see the route for six minutes. They get to check it out, try to work it out, and then they go backstage and desperately try to remember it. And that took place before the broadcast, so a couple of minutes before we started talking. So they're in isolation, which means they are not allowed to get any information um, about other competitors about the route, about um, how far who's come, and yeah. 
Well, the men are waiting back in that isolation area. We just saw a hand peeking out behind the curtain, mm. <laughs> which is very dramatic, I yeah. thought. I think that's the volunteer who lets them out. <laughs> yes, I was trying to work out whose fingers they were. But, no, uh, there's someone who holds the curtain for you to open it up. <laughs> it wasn't Adam Andrews, no, anyway. He's got much thicker fingers. Whose hand was that? <laughs> <laughs> well, the men will be out in a couple of seconds. And we'll be introduced to our audience here in Chamonix. So the men won't be introduced. We go straight onto the women's first run. Mia Cramble coming out onto the stage. Now, look, she's an Olympian. She's used to dealing with pressure, and yet we haven't seen her in a fi finals for a while. Do you think she's going to be feeling a little bit stressed in this moment? I think she's been looking forward to this moment for a long time. And uh, I think many Olympians had uh, like a kind of post-comp crisis, let's say. Some of them did. I don't know if she did. But she looked for it, I think, definitely. Right, so Mia Cramble is underway. You can see the graphic on the left-hand side. That's to keep track of her score. And the best score you can get is a top. That's getting to the end of the route and quilipping the final quick draw. But every hold on the way is numbered. The higher the athlete goes, the higher their score. And there's a plus as well. And we'll explain that as we continue onwards. So Mia Crample, slow to start with cautious climbing through this bottom section, because the last thing you want to do is drop the bottom. Yes. Remember Innsbruck. Yeah, yes, you, you have one chance, you have one try. You've never seen the route before, the observation, and uh, you need to have all the moves dialed in. But then if you're too careful, you can lose a lot of power. So there has to be a balance between efficiency and uh, well, yeah, care. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, the time is always ticking. There it is, 4.50 on the clock. Mia Crample, slow and very cautious through this first section. And she's coming to really the first hard sequence here. And she does pretty easily getting that jug hold on the yes, right. Yes, and the jug is blocked, as you can see, with the hold that has kind of a plastic surface that prevents them from heel hooking. And well, heel hooking is resting, technically. If you have a good heel hook, you're resting there. So the root setters want to make it as hard as possible. So you test the pure resistance and, well, endurance of, of the competitors. So they want to limit uh, the resting place as much as possible. But competitors, as experienced as they are and as strong as they are, they always find some resting spots. Uh, through the route, even some unplanned ones. Yeah, and that blocker holds. Well, that's what Mia Cramble is on there, that rather attractive uh, pattern design with the orange holds. And not just for aesthetic reasons, that is the blockers that Stash is talking about. <laughs> but they are also half the time just um, art. <laughs> I think it looks <laughs> good. Way, yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah, like me it. too, me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mia is in a semi-resting position here. It's one of the few in the route, but she moves quickly through it. So from crimps, we move to some slopers, which are, from what I see here, very shiny, dual, dual text. So the part where her fingers are has some texture. The other parts are slippery. So there's a little jump. Oh. Now, don't be afraid if you're a Mia Crample fan. There's a lot of cut loose moves through this section. You have to do it. There are, I mean, you can be more static through it, but sometimes it's quicker and easier just to yes, do that. Yeah, you, you just save a lot of power by doing some moves dynamically. You, if, When you're in a static move, it's an isometric contraction and that loses a lot of power. It's also like the clipping is really exhausting. Um, but many athletes train on spray walls, but what you can't train on spray, or you can, but um, you usually don't train clipping and you clip from a completely isometric position. So you have to be in a difficult, difficult, like on a hold and a foothold, bad foothold. And then you just have to let go of one hand, pull the rope and clip, and you have to hold this position. And this is really energy draining. Well, Mia Cramble gets through that clock-like feature. She has to climb from six all the way yeah. back around to 12. And look at that high heel for Mia Cramble. Is there a knee bar potential there? She knee certainly... elbow bar. <laughs> I mean, she certainly looked for it, didn't she? Yeah. Right, well, Mia Crample is coming to the head wall here. That metal coping separates the overhanging section to the more vertical part of the wall. It gets pretty technical up there. Um, small holds, oh, loses control up there. So I don't think she was really tired out there. She thinks she just lost a foot or something. Yeah, left hand came off the crimp. 
Yeah. Not really a dry fire either, I don't think. We'll watch it again, of course, but it didn't look like a big explosion. No, it just no, no. I think she was focusing on moving the feet, and then when you slide the focus away from the hold, which is probably really bad, then you, are, you might just pop off. So she was in hold 37. The root has 46. Like The top hold has a value of 46. So... Uh, Look at that spectacular move. She launches left, yeah. almost horizontal there, sort of a front lever. Yes. And then heading upwards. You can see those crosses on the black volumes. That isn't to indicate anything. That's just the brand yeah. of hold. Yeah. Oh, and then she just dropped somehow. I think there's, this one is dual text, the, the, the hole she dropped off from. So double trouble. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's a slippery surface, that dual texture. Yeah, it's used so often now. It's yes. everywhere. Okay, next athlete out is Jessica Pilt. And look, if you're a superstitious person, please have everything crossed right now because... <laughs> All the fingers and thumbs. Everything, look, I've got them crossed. I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't care, I'm doing it. Because Jessie Pilt has been so unlucky in finals recently. Will this be her night here in Chamonix? Yeah, I think she's going to do well now. I think she also likes climbing in Chamonix and, and she's an experienced climber. I mean, slips happen. Um, unfortunate conditions happen. Of course, you can always do your best to prevent yourself from failing in, in, in such uh, inconveniences, but I think now she feels confident and she climbed really well uh, so far. So yeah, she's going to cruise. Maybe she's at that point where it's kind of like, just forget the past. You know, yeah. It's happened. What are you going to do? I mean, what, exactly. What are you going to do? And it's the best strategy to move on. You just have to forget. You can't be super critical uh, of yourself for the whole season. And like drag this uh, lack of luck throughout every round. It's just going to pull you down. Well, Jessie is underway. And like Mia Cramble, she's being careful through the bottom part of the route. These look pretty uncomfortable, especially like these feet seem pretty high up for, for her body size. But she manages to pass the tricky section. Yeah, and then this is the first big move. It's a cross through, jumps, locks into the jug. Good work from Jesse. Not a particularly difficult move, but certainly the first goey section. Yes, and you have to hit the slot because it's really easy to go too high and then just hit the blocker hold and then you're out. Um, and yeah, it's a jug, but it's obviously a jug for just one hand, so you can't really match and rest inside. So Jesse Pilt on 14, as you can see on the left. So she needs to beat Mia Cramples 36 plus in order to get to the first position. And then she's on this lovely design of holds here, high foot. And finds a semi-resting position here. It looks like on your screen that you can bridge that gap, but it is deliberately awkward. Yeah, yeah especially if your feet are, well, on the height of your hands. Yeah. <laughs> It's not very comfortable. But yeah, that was from some pulling, you go to pressing. In lead climbing, you don't often see pressing positions, so it can be a little bit of a shock for the body when you find yourself in this like half mental. And suddenly from pulling and, and resting on like, like straight arms, you have to suddenly use it for pushing away. Uh, it can be a bit weird. Yeah, and again, she's resting in a pushing position yes. as well, which is not particularly restful. Yeah, it is restful for the, uh, for the forearms. Um, but yeah, it does strain the rest of your body and your core, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, my shoulders were aching watching yeah. that. So, Jessie now will go towards the left, and this is where the feet get tricky. So there's this toe hook on the right, but they don't seem to be using it. So oh, nice split. Yeah, Jessie's oh. smearing with the left. She might just go on the shoulder to the left like the. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, don't slip there. <laughs> right. It was close. Did someone stop crossing something there? Yeah. <laughs> Please don't. So Jesse has uh, an uh, interesting looking heel there. It's kind of pressed half on the yeah, wall. Yeah, because you have the slippery part above it and you don't want to have the heel touch that. But this is a good position enough. Like You can like push to the right and it's also just to have your leg up somewhere yeah. higher than your center of mass so it doesn't uh, load your arms. I mean, we were talking about athletes finding heel hooks. That's a good example yes. of it. That's not one I would have spotted. Yeah, I don't think it was 
meant to be a heel, like, or maybe it was meant to be a resting point, I don't know. You never know what the root set is intended until you talk to them. They but told me there were no resting points, so <laughs> well. uh, once again, the athlete's <laughs> proving them wrong a little yes. bit. Um, Jessie looking good at the moment, cutting yeah. these when she needs to. I think she's calm now, I think she's in really good shape, she just uh, has yet to prove it. So, Jessie looks very calm in her own world, ignoring the crowd. Which is hard to do because there are thousands of them in the stadium <laughs> watching right now. This is a tricky section, you have to turn around a bit, get so. away from the wall and the, the plane. And now these feet up. This is a bit of a weird section, really. It's like also, you have the rope behind your leg, and oh, it doesn't look very comfortable. Yeah, you've got to be careful with rope management on this. Oh. Decides to clip low. Oh. This is weird. <laughs> Yeah, Jesse, awkward. Almost looks like she wants a knee bar in there, but yeah. it's not possible, really. You can't really. You, you can just like press with the knee to your hand. Yeah, so now she's standing up high. Okay, so this is where Mia fell. There's a bit of a rope stuck down there. Oof. We can see it she dragging on the black it. volume. Yes, and now we go again back to the volumes. Dual text. She has to clip from here. This is a really strenuous clipping position. Yeah, and look how small the holds get now. This is where the crimpy section of the route kicks in for Jessie Pills. But she is in first position with 56 seconds to go, so she's got time. Yes, uh, if she doesn't rest too long on this one. But yeah, you see this tiny blocker hold on this tiny crimp. So it's like, how much can you block it? <laughs> well, they just want one finger rather than oh, two. Oh, well, she didn't it. use she it, so it. oh well. So Jessie bumps her <laughs> hold out to the orange. And now she's got the top in sight, but she's having to work hard. Up into a tiny pinch of an undercling, that thumb working to keep her on the wall. But she's one move off here, couple of, two moves two, off. Two moves, let's see. Into the side pull, and this could be a top. A little top. It is from Jessie Pilt, so the bad luck is gone, dispelled. <laughs> that was you Spell at home. Broken. <laughs> With your fingers crossed that did that. Good job, good job. Uh, audience you did great so jesse so Pilts comes down with the mountains in the background and the crowd go crazy for jesse as they should that was a good performance from her yeah the, the roots looks well pumpy just endurance there are a few more dynamic moves so to say but they're not any like crazy jumps as we had them in, in villar yeah true a different style of route and that was the foot pop where we all had <laughs> a bit of a moment. And finally, <laughs> the end. Jessie walks off to the stage and she comes and joins Mia Cramble on the edge of the stage to the left of your screen where the uh, awning is underneath the speed wall. The athletes sit and they watch. And Jessie currently in the hot spot as Brooke Rabatou comes onto the stage. <laughs> So, Brooke Rabatou is back, and Stasha, I don't know if it's just me, but I don't know if it's just me, but she's got a real flow to her at the moment with the lead ball. I know she had a break from bouldering for one comp. Mm. She seemed to reset during that time, and it's looking good at the moment. Yeah, it's like, it's not that hard to find the flow. You need some time, and you need some, well, miles. Uh, but also, I found it with myself as well, like in the last couple of weeks, like the flow just comes, and it, it's better and better every comp. You just find yourself, being more efficient and more confident um, on the holds and in, in different positions. Also with clipping, like it was the first shock. It's just like my body was going crazy. Like, what are we doing here? Why is it so static all of a sudden? Um, but some people can adapt much faster than the others. And Brooke is doing a really good job with this. And well, she's still very young and uh, well, an Olympian. She did both disciplines for a long time. So uh, that that has an effect as well. Yeah, and it, Brooke has yet to win a gold medal. Oh yeah, True. in lead. So uh, and Boulder. So she's looking for her first. She's of course been on the podium many times, but never got a gold. Yeah, she's been very very consistent this season, um, alongside her team colleague Natalia. 
So Brooke cutting loose on the first hard move, making everything look easy. And this is this flow. When we talk about flow, this is the thing. It's 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 not sort of staccato between the moves. It's just effortlessly between sequences. Yes, you're, you're, you're cruising. You know what you're doing. You're confident and you trust your abilities. And in lead, it's very important that you you trust yourself and you trust your feet. Um, and this ability to kind of Re release the tension from the hand when you're resting because when you switch from bouldering usually you just like over grip things and uh, this is very inefficient you lose a lot of power also when you're like readjusting the hand on the hold when you grab it so you need to l learn this kind of technique to just grab the hold and then kind of release the fingers a bit so you don't overdo it yeah and over gripping is an easy thing to do because you'd think, look, you're going to hold every hold as hard as you can, yes. and yet doing that... You don't get points for that. <laughs> no, exactly. And the pump is going to get like, yeah. really intense. Yes, yes. Um, it's a very intense pump, especially if you if you mess up the clip and uh, then you have to stay in this position for even longer than initially, you have to practice also fast clipping. This is a very essential thing to, to know how to do and a, a good skill. Uh, because the shorter you are in this overly tight static position, the less power you're going to lose. So Brooke finds a knee bar, but she's got to be careful with her hand. Now releases it. Interesting. Everyone doing a slightly different sequence through here, which is what the resetters thought might happen. Lots of ways through it. Yes, when you have big holds, you can always find a way to um, adjust your body and your size to it and find some resting position which you wouldn't plan or you didn't like see from the ground but there are always some little knee bars even if they're just like pressing against the wall slightly they can help a lot i love that look back from brooke so sort of reminded us all that she's having a good time out there <laughs> and natalia said something to me which is interesting which uh, i think brooke had the thing it's like natalia was psyched because she gets to climb on a new route for the first time and i think you saw that with brooke there you know she's having a good time out there it's it's <laughs> As much as she's trying, it's, it is fun. Yeah, it is the, the beautiful thing about our sport, that every time we climb, there is something new. And especially why we like it so much in semis and finals, and in also in qualities in, in Boulder, is that we don't know what we're going to climb up until we, we're facing the wall and we're just at our task. So Brooke approaches the head wall now, gets a knee bar scrub in to stand up. You can see that rope which uh, caused me a crample a few problems not getting in the way yet for Brooke seems to be getting a bit tired so when the shoulder starts to go up towards the head it well, indicates a little bit of fatigue but these athletes are very well trained to fight through the fatigue so don't worry we'll see a few moves yeah look at that great angle down at the crowd staring up at Brooke oh that's an awkward clear yes under the arm mm. So Brooke squats down on that right foot, finds a semi-rest there, but that left toe, is it, it's turned around from where you want that foothold to be. Yeah, and the other one is blocked from both sides, so nobody even uses it because you just want to avoid these things. <laughs> but Brooke is the... Oh, she's so good at standing on impossible things. She, she's I, trying to use that hole. She really likes the hole. It's, she likes it more than the orange one. Oh, thinks better of it. Misses the kick a little bit with the left foot. This move is really difficult enough. So now you have to twist your whole body around, put your feet up, and now press against the volume. To oh. oh, too low. She reached, got the crimp, and then slipped. Down she comes. She's not a second silver medal position at the moment with three athletes gone. So Brooks stood up to the crimp, and we'll see how close she came in a second. But looks like she had it, but wasn't quite high enough on it. Yeah, I think she miscalculated, or maybe she hit the plastic part of it. Who knows? Because it's a bit higher up on the volume, you can't really see it really well. And she kind of was a bit too short. Let's well, see. This what is happened. it. Let's look. Uh, she had it. She had it, and then one finger slipped, and then it was on the wrong part of the hold. So then she couldn't, she, I think she like tried to adjust, but then while adjusting she pulled out. Yeah, and the left foot didn't look like it was on very much to be able to steady herself yeah. by dropping down. So, Well, Brooke's done. Next athlete in a couple of seconds out on stage.
So Brooke Rabbit who joins her competitors on the left. And next is Shen So who comes out. And Shen So, well, she pushed Yanya all the way in Innsbruck. In fact, Vilas was the first time she ever missed a podium in a senior female lead World Cup event. What a stat <laughs> What a stat eh? <laughs> Ridiculous. She's that good, Shan So. And it's funny, with the hype of Yanya, you tend to forget how good Shan So is. And, yeah. you know, potentially Olympics. I mean, she's one to watch, especially considering that she had a pretty good bouldering season this yes, year. Yes, exactly. This, this bouldering season for her was pretty surprising from us, well, old boulders, old people. Uh, Not including me in that category, that's <laughs> that. <laughs> you are Kathy. right, but still. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was very surprising to see in what kind of good shape she was uh, uh, this season and then managed to switch to lead so quickly and so well. Um, I'm pretty impressed by these people, really, uh, because I realized how difficult this is to do and some of them doing it with such ease makes me jealous. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, you're allowed to say that. Yeah. <laughs> so Shen So is underway. And it's interesting how slow uh, Jesse and Mia were through this middle section and then <laughs> Shen So just cruises it. I think she's really good at crimps. She also proved that in, in bouldering cups. Like every time we had a semi-final with very crimpy boulders, um, she would cruise through. She would just find it was no problem at all. So good at crimp, so she might enjoy the top of this route if she can get there. Yeah, probably will. Big move first, does it statically and then cuts the feet loose. I think she really benefited a lot from improving in bouldering as well. I don't think, from, from what I remember the past years, well, during the Olympic cycle and before that, she wasn't really hyped on, on bouldering at all. But you can see how she does certain semi-dynamic moves with much more ease than, than never before. So it always, like, doing both disciplines always benefits, like, the other. No matter what your specialis specialization is or what you prefer more, when you do both, even when you do speed, it's just like you get a certain kind yeah. of power that you can use in, in bouldering as well. Absolutely. You, you could see that when the athletes were training speed. Press moves, power moves seem to get easier. Well, Shan So gets crossed up underneath, makes it into an undercling. Yeah, well, Jessie rested in the press position. She finds an undercling, which I don't think is more comfortable. But whatever works for sale. Yeah, she didn't stand it very long. She's one of those athletes who never looks like she's pumped until she falls as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I know. I'm very familiar with it. <laughs> Just like it goes, it goes, it goes, and then you pump. But for me, it happens way earlier than for, for sale, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah, she has got endurance. So let's see how she can work away through the sequences. And she's using, oh, trying to use that toe, turned it into a heel. Now statics it again. And the problem with having a heel or a toe like that is when you release it, you cause that big swing, which she had there. Yeah. Uh, well, in the, she avoided the jump, so she didn't have to really like launch off to hit this. So she had it with the hand and then released the feet, which is much easier than actually having to jump. Um, yeah, for shorter climbers, they have to commit much more in these dynamic moves or find certain heel hooks slash toe hooks closer to their hands, which taller climbers wouldn't do or wouldn't be comfortable for them to do. Um, so some people would rather jump because it's easier. Uh, but yeah, it all depends on your style and, and, and your body composition and your strengths. So Shen So rests a little bit here. This move with our camera, okay, it looks so good. Snatching into the volume. No jib or anything on that volume. It seems really important to get the right sequence with your hand with your feet here and then everyone you see they do like a little push with their knee against their, their hand so you can just like use an extra force inwards so Shan so doing well as she works out how to get through this head wall sequence no one really used this first hold here and everyone just went on together I think she's trying to get some knee bar but she oh now, is that because she's desperate for a rest or just because she thinks it's the most efficient way, do you think? I can't be sure, Matt. I think Yeah, sorry, she... you can't read their minds, yeah. so I do appreciate that. But <laughs> it was interesting because she didn't look pumped and yet she was kind of fighting for that position. I think she was a bit pumped. By the way, she snatched on the volume lower. She, like, pulled her hat a bit. That can also be a sign of some fatigue. But 
Um, maybe she thought there must be an Evo. I don't know. I can't tell you. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense for there to be one in that position. But yeah. anyway, so she goes into the crimps, <laughs> which she said she might like. So let's see if she does on this sequence here. A few shoulder moves here before she gets to the side pull section of blocked crazy holds. Oh, she skips this one. Brooke liked the other one. Yeah, I have no idea why that hold's really there. Yeah, but, um, me neither. Maybe someone will use it at some point. Into the undercling now, and then rotates the body round to the left. And Sheon So is on for a top oh, hit. He seems fairly comfortable here. Yeah, this is the move where we lost Brooke, but she's just chalking up on it as she reaches up. Side pull, one move off for Shian So. She's going to pop for the top. She does, holds it, and she will clip the chains for another top. And because she is in a higher position, she will jump. Oh, no. So, oh, yeah, Brooke didn't top. So, Jesse, yeah, she was in a higher position than Jesse, so she will take the lead. Um, but if any of the remaining athletes top, uh, they will get higher, obviously. But if Natalia and Yanya both top, then we'll have to see the time, which none of us really like. We don't like to see speed, like deciding the competition. Yeah, but in the end of the day, you have to break a tie somehow. <laughs> exactly. And the thing is, the athletes seem to be topping more consistent to yeah. each other. They're closer and closer. Yeah. But we are. So Natalia and Yanya might be split by time, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a sec. And Sheon So jumps up into first position. In fact, let's have a look at the leaderboard, shall we? So as confirmed, Sheon So in the lead because of count back to semis. Jesse Pilts is second, also topping the route. And then Brooke Rabatou with that pop pushes her down to third position and Mia Crample in fourth. So that's the way we stand halfway through this women's final. The men's is yet to come. So a good start to this competition. Tops around and we'll see what the second half can do. Okay, well, as we have a little pause in proceedings, I spoke to Natalia Grossman about her semi final, so let's check out that content, shall we? Finals qualifier Natalia Grossman with me. What we have here is a couple of moments from your semi finals climb. So let's start the video and if you could chat through what's going on on screen. So, how are you feeling in this moment? Um, I guess just like excited because I have a whole route that I haven't tried that's like right in front of me. Maybe a little bit nervous because I'm like, okay, I still have like a whole route in front of me. And we're coming up to a moment where a lot of the other athletes fell on. This traverse from right to left, slightly weird feet. So let's watch this moment. Um, I definitely missed the jib a little bit at first, but then once I readjusted, it was good. And I think this was just like a little bit more of a powerful move than some of the other moves. And so you just had to like kind of punch a little more. Um, but luckily, since I've been, I'd say more bouldering than rope climbing, in the past few months, I was like ready for it. And then we come into this moment where you're on the underclings and you have this wonderful shot of you on the PTZ cam smiling. Were you starting to enjoy it at that second? Yeah, I had kind of just seen the scoreboard when I was there. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm in. And then the next part of the route is the main feature for the women, this mantle pressing section. So as we watch it, what was happening? Yeah, the mantle was actually pretty hard, I thought. You really had to get over the foot. And then when I reached up, it was like very extended. And I feel like I'm, I have a pretty big like plus ape index, plus three. I was kind of surprised at how big it was. But as soon as I flipped my left hand from like to like a palm, then it was much easier. And then the top move, because all the other women popped and did it dynamically. You were static on that moment. That, that was very cool. <laughs> I didn't know like how deep you had to go, so I didn't want to jump to it and miss. Natalia, best of luck for tonight's finals. Thank you for talking through this, and as always, it's wonderful to watch you climb. Thank you so much. Well, that was earlier on this afternoon with Natalia Grossman, taking a couple of minutes after her semi-final run 
in order to uh, chat us through that route. Right, we are halfway through this women's semi-finals. Next up will be Laura Rogera onto the stage. There she is, she's back in action. Now, we often talk about Laura struggling perhaps on dynamic moves. There isn't a lot in this route that I've seen that will test her like that. Yeah, no, she, she doesn't really struggle with dynamic moves so much. I think she struggles with like a bit compressions. I think this is more of her weakness, but we don't see this here. So I think she's gonna top this route. I won't judge too early, you know, never know. But uh, I, th I think she just has endless endurance and a lot of crimps in this route and I think she'll just do it easily. Well, Stash has called it early here. That's <laughs> a brave thing to do. Uh, oh, man, you just put so much pressure on my judgment. <laughs> it's fine, you can commentate to Cursor all you want. So, Clara Rogera is underway and you can see in the background the uh, sun is starting to set on the mountains, creating that image that every photographer loves here. Yeah, it's pretty scenic around here. So, Laura is underway. Now, this is the first launchy move. Gets it easily for her. Cuts loose, gets the feet on. So, we talked about flow and overgripping. So, I think she was overgripping here a bit. She might have some grudge against the dynamic moves and long moves, but. Um, so that's why she just tries to be as secure as possible. We don't see that flow that we've seen with, with Brooke, but that won't stop her from climbing pipe. So what is the danger of over-gripping, that everything just tenses up a bit? Yeah, you just, uh, well, pump yourself up. <laughs> Basically, you, you just collect lactic acid, and um, if you can't, let's say, get rid of it by shaking off or resting, well, it's gonna stay there and get you pumped. So Lara pressing upwards, a semi-rest in here, but it's so awkward, deliberately done so, and you can see how awkward it is, almost banged her head. What, you don't know what to do with your head, you just have to like find some position. Well, Brooke head jammed last week in Vilas. Oh, this is awkward for Lara. She doesn't like the press, really. She couldn't find herself comfortable in there. She's really struggling to rest her left hand. Yeah, she'll know it is a rest, and she's trying to find a position of comfort, but as you can see, it's it's not easy. She's trying to go in the underclink somehow. So Laura getting a little flustered under there. Now she moves through it, and I think she'll probably feel better once she's underway again. Yeah, definitely. So we realize she doesn't like pressing. Okay. <laughs> okay, so watch the feet through here see how she does it. She looks for the toe hook, which is logical, but then immediately you've got to leave it because it's quite a long way to the left. And yeah, this toe hook, I think, helps you rest a little bit before this section, but she's just going to find another toe hook here in order to not have a big swing and not jump here. Oh, shoulder move from Laura, sticks it. And there's a knee bar. Oh, oh, that's oh, a rest. Oh, that there we go. <laughs> so resting, like you said, that root set is told you. Yes. You can't rest. They try to eliminate the rest, but as we can see, that's rubbish. So I got a question. Um, why is that so? That there are so many unpredicted rests in females, and much more than in males. Is it because of the lack of, of testing that we don't have like many female testing? Uh, well, like root setters, root setters yeah. and, and, and people like ex-competitors or anyone who could like try to root and judge by uh, well by their expertise but um, also when we watch the demonstration of the roots for the qualification it just looks that the demonstrators or well, root setters are clipping from well let's say uncomfortable positions and then we all find a way to go around their beta so there definitely is some thing there. Oh, hang on, it's Laura cuts loose and it goes feet first through there. Let's go back to resting in a sec, because we'll, we'll carry on when she's resting yes. next. If she, if she finds the knee by that say what it is, yeah. or like try to, because ah, you really have to break your leg to go here. Well, there he is again. There is? Oh. No, it's the, the one we saw earlier. Yeah, it's just pressing in underneath. Oh, is it? Yeah, she has got a knee bar in there. It's oh. not the best, but it's there. Some, at least something, yeah. What a fight this is from Laura Ruggera. Yes. And there's a blocked crimp coming up, you can see. So just enough for three fingers on that. And then she presses up high. That's where we lost Mia at the beginning, but she's going to keep fighting up here. Right, so Laura's onto the last section. 
And I mean, I'd say she's looking pumped, but to be honest, she's looked in trouble since the bottom, and she's done <laughs> brilliantly to get this far. And she has a minute still left to go. So the time doesn't matter for her, but she needs to not time out. Oh, she skips the shoulder remove, which would save her a bunch of energy there. Ah, oh, smart. Very smart from Lara. And like, almost predictably, she uses <laughs> that terrible crimp, which she loves. Look at that, oh, cranking just, on it. Oh, but this one is now, oh, okay. Oh. I wanted to say it was harder, but it doesn't seem to be. <laughs> no, I mean, it looks logical when she does it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think Lara's going to top out it. Stasha called it. <laughs> Oh, and maybe I, talk I don't too know. Early. I don't know. Let's oh, not. I just got so early. nervous watching this. She needs the right foot a bit higher than that foothold, but I don't know if she can. Oh yeah, there oh, it is. Oh, she's fighting, isn't she? The left grip is good, but this one is not. And now you just have to bump again. But I don't know if she can. It's going to be a swingy move, and she is pumped. Oh. Can she stick this final? Is she going to stay in for so long, but she can't move? She sets herself oh. up, gets it. Ten seconds to go. She's going to clip those chains, topping out, and she will jump to the top of the leaderboard in gold medal position. Oh. And she asked the crowd this to get behind so her. This is so intense. Like, the amount of time she stood on this in this really long position. And she had, she aimed for the cross and everyone else bumped with the right hand. And I felt like she had, she didn't have her feet sorted out. So her left foot was super close to the center of her body. Like too much to the right. If she pressed it a bit, a little bit to the left, she could have easily, or well, not easily, but a bit easier to do to, to go with her right hand again. But she needed the height to go with the left, so this is a very difficult choice to make. But uh, yeah, the top hold is good enough, so she could still <laughs> hold on. I think she was really shocked by this. She knew how much she struggled through it. She really did. I mean, I'm, they were not doing a down at all here because it just was a battle for her, that route. Well, Lara's done, and we move on to the next athlete. So you were saying about resting, just wrap that up. So the, the women, they do seem to find better positions, don't they? Yes, because maybe also women vary in sizes much more than men do. You have a variation from 152 of Tani Natsuki to, I don't know, an uh, 168, or I don't know how much, maybe 165 on average, I would say. Um, and maybe because of that and body constitution, you can find yourself, like your knee might not fit in a knee bar, uh, where somebody else who's shorter could. This is also like the matter of leg length and the root setters are usually much taller than most women. And maybe this is why they think, oh, you cannot rest here. There's no way you can fit in this. But it's just because they can't. I, I think so, I don't know. And, and yeah, definitely we lack female root setters, we need more of them. It's, yeah, it's yeah. definitely a fact. Well, thank you, Stasha. That's, as you can see, Stasha is the expert <laughs> of this kind of analysis, so thank you. <laughs> well, Natsuki Tani is underway here. Her best ever is third in a lead World Cup. Can she better that tonight in Chamonix? We know this route is toppable. Just look at that top three, so it's possible. Can Natsuki Tani find something special here this evening? She's through the first section easily. She was eighth in Vilas, fifth in Innsbruck. Consistently getting into the top ten. Yeah, she's in a really good run this season. Right, so Natsuki will set herself up. And you see, chalking up, she knows that it gets more and more intense from this moment onwards. Reaches through, similar to Laura, and then cuts loose and puts the foot on. Mia Crample looking lonely there on the wall. It says all top three are at the top of the wall. One, two, three, as you can see, indicated on the graphic. Yeah, it's a really a pity that Mia fell that low. I think she could she could have pushed a bit more, and she was also pretty shocked when she fell down. She didn't expect that slip. So Natsuki makes the clip. Good climbing from her so far, precise with the feet. Uh, watched a, a lot of Japanese climbers yesterday in the qualification. They're all so calculated. They're all like, it's a difficult move and they can't do it the intended way, but they're gonna find a way. They're just gonna try everything else. And little bits by little bit, they, they still find a way through, no matter the wrong beta or anything. And they, they have a lot of endurance. They, they can do uh, a lot of moves, but if they're a bit more difficult, they might not be able to do the move. 
but they can do some other move that was, well, not intended. Yeah, as you can see, like she just pushes her elbow from the inside. None of the other competitors rested like this, from what I remember. Um, it's all about improvising when you feel stuck. Yeah, and look at the difference in Laura, who we just saw resting in that position, and Natsuki. It's night and day, isn't it? <laughs> Laura was panicking in that position. Yeah. She was so desperate to find something, and he, she couldn't. And I think she just lost more energy than she actually regained yeah. in that one. It shows her endurance because she carried on top of the <laughs> yeah. thing out. I mean, yeah. it's like, come on. That was a panic climb there. <laughs> uh, brilliant from her. Well, Natsuki starts this sequence, which we're familiar with now. So the toe helps, but she's got to release it in a sec. But look at resting again. And this is. The cut loose. Yeah, you can cut loose with straight arms, more or less. I think they're, they're pretty okay holds. If they were much worse, you would have to engage your shoulders and biceps a lot more to, to hold on to that. So with a back heel there with the left, sets that in place. It's always better to put your feet in any way than to not put your feet at all so that this back heel or, or twisted toes or whatever weird looking positions that probably your climbing instructors never <laughs> like recommended or told you they're completely wrong they can always help you in the in, in the route so like don't worry don't get embarrassed by any weird position she's trying to match hands oh I tell you what, this women's route is I mean, it's interesting watching the different ways <laughs> they're climbing it. It's like I, I always dislike matching holds. It's like I, I despise it, really. <laughs> I have big hands. That's I about to say you've got massive I fingers, can't that's what match it does. Crimps, <laughs> right, so Natsuki gets this half a knee bar in on the corner of the volume. She just removes the hand, she has to clip, but she doesn't feel oh does the same thing with the cross. It's not as bad as it looks. Actually, it's pretty chilled out up there. So she's shaking out that right hand, trying to get rid of the pump. And it's not really a full knee bar either, it's no. just the corner. Well, you're basically pressing up against your hand, and if you remove the hand, you're only on your right hand on this blocked crimp. So you don't want to lose any of that for a knee bar. Oh, looking awkward though. She tries to get stood up onto the head wall. She took the blocked foothold, no? Yeah, I think so. So Ooh. she's up onto the side pulls, 37 her score. And climbers keep like consistently coming up to the head wall with one minute left to go, which proved enough or well, yeah. al almost enough or so. Yeah, she did check the clock there. The athletes can see it from that position. And that Suki Tani has, yeah, 47 seconds, lots of time. She's done this well. So I think this hop might be a bit too good for this crux to be difficult. And uh, yeah, she skips the, the jib. Yeah, um, Laura, the only one to do that so and I far. Think Brooke took it to like go again, yeah. but uh, she didn't bother with it. Yeah, didn't really. <laughs> anymore. <laughs> no. So Natsuki Tani is looking to upgrade the feet. She's two moves off. She oh, she's having to work out. Looks a bit out. awkward up there. She doesn't trust the foot for it seems. Out onto the side pull, one move off, the pop to the top. Same as Laura. Oh, oh and drops no. the top. A head in her hands as she comes down. She was looking pumped, and when you're pumped, a big move like that becomes more yes, difficult. Yes, it's, it's like you can't use your arm anymore. When you're so pumped, you can stay in the position for some time, but as long as you have to go forward, it just feels like your arms lock, and you can just go down. But we saw Laura, she could still use a bit of momentum from her hips and hang on with her stray fingers. But uh, Tani, unfortunately, couldn't deliver as well as, as Laura. Well, let's watch some replays of that climb. That was, that was really good to watch. I enjoyed that all the way. Interesting sequences and moves. This was the clip near the top. She had that well, knee barring her own fingers. And then the final move came up. You see the oh, hand the peeling pump. off. Yeah, she was on there, but she had yeah. no more juice than that. There's that problem of pump where it doesn't matter the size of the jump. Yeah, you're still falling, you're off, still it. falling yeah. off of it. Yeah, it's the <laughs> worst feeling ever, seriously. Well, that is what we're treated to here this evening as the cherry picker with the photographers on goes through. Stunning backdrop to the climbing here tonight. So next out is Yanya Gambre onto the stage. Here she comes, and the crowd will respond. <laughs> she just loves the show. 
Now look, this is a this is a weird way of thinking about it, okay, so bear with me, but we know how much Yanya likes a hard route. Yes. This isn't the hardest no, of routes. No, she will. It she could. knows their tops. I think she hurt them. So she knows their tops. Maybe that will throw her off. Maybe she's just going to be maybe relax. I mean, look, I'm, I'm just trying to make it not seem like Yanya's going to top every route here, okay? <laughs> because she is in amazing form right now, yeah. but you never know. So. Yeah, you never know. She's... Things can happen. Obviously, she can step on the vault. I don't know. I mean, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, uh, it happens to everyone. But I think she's experienced enough. I think maybe she's even. Is she the oldest? I don't know. She's the oldest in the. In the no, Jessie's the oldest. Sorry, maybe second oldest, but definitely one of the most experienced climbers out there. And she knows how to handle. She's been in this position so often before that there were many tops before that, and she knew that she had to do it, and she had to do it quick, especially with Natalia coming after that, where time can decide between them. Yeah. So yeah, uh, the clock is a factor now. Remember that. If Yanya wins here tonight. Well, she, this is her 20th lead World Cup win, which puts a joint third in the all-time list for wins. And what, 51 medals in total? Yeah. It was 50 was last week. 50 yeah. was last week, so this is 51. <laughs> I mean, that's just, what else do you say about this lady? Anyway, she's underway, into the jug, cuts loose, one arm's her way through that move. Now that little orange art up here on the turkeys uh, element of the wall. <laughs> a poetic yeah. So she's coming through. And that is like that because of the blockers. They don't, it's quite, they're quite good, some of those orange holes. They don't want the women to get unnecessary heel hooks for them. And unnecessary jug rests. So yeah. you re because if you get a rest that's good enough, you basically reset completely. And uh, well, Root setters don't want that. They want a good fight, as we all do. Yeah, there's a hive of activity down on the floor as Yanya climbs upwards, everyone crowding around the stage watching her. So Yanya crosses through, gets stood up high, and now she begins the really hard part, the hard section of this route. And it can go wrong at this moment. Walks her feet up turquoise volume. So. Yeah, Yanya has been around for a while. Actually, she started competing when she was 16. Well, yep. basically, since she was eligible. And uh, Oh, look at that. Sorry, she cuts <laughs> loose in the yeah. spotlight. She likes them good jumps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the route might not be hard enough for her. I know she really enjoyed Innsbruck because she was like, finally, there's a hard route. But if there's a hard route, other people fall in the middle of the wall. And she came to, like, I don't know, 10, 11 moves further than the, the second climber, and she still didn't even re come close to the top. And uh, yeah, she, she likes a good challenge, but, but people also want to see tops. Yeah, know? but the clock is important in this, yes. remember, because if Natalia tops it as well, it's going to come down to time. So, as Stasha, as Stasha, that's you, that, as Yanya gets oh, the Oh yeah, that's me up there. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, oh no, why is she struggling with this? Okay, so she's fumbling this clip a little bit and remember the clock. So, Yanya needs to climb quickly here. She knows that this was unnecessary. I think she, she wasn't sure what kind of a hold this one is, so she could have clipped from here easily, but she just wanted to play it safe and then realized she made a mistake and now she's gonna try to shake off that mistake. <laughs> yeah, and we were talking earlier in the semi-finals how much mistakes can impact the rest of the route because it's hard to recover from that, especially when it's at this level. Yeah, you have to acknowledge that you made a mistake, obviously, but you have to be able to reset from it or try to make it has the least, it may have the least impact on, on, on the rest of your performance. Um, and you know if you're in good shape, it shouldn't affect you much. But Yanya is having to fight her way through this route a little here. Perhaps unsettled by that moment. Uh, seems to be the comfiest clip, actually, this weird position. And she's quick as well, because the other athletes ran about a minute. Oh, yeah, no, but that was after the yeah, rest, true. so she shouldn't be resting more than 30 seconds here. I think she needs to be up there with a minute and a half at least. And it's interesting to see sometimes when the climber that is supposed to chase the time comes out, they start rushing. Like, I think Laura did that in Innsbruck, and she just started super fast. But the route wasn't the one you could go fast on. So then she suddenly, 10 moves in, she just had to slow down her pace because it was impossible to climb like that. Sometimes you have to be steady no matter the time. Well, she is faster than the rest here. 
Yanya comes through. There's another little rest here in this side pull, but she just decides to continue. Yeah, use that bad hold as an intermediate before popping into the un orange underclink. Is this very particularly weird underclink? It's probably blocked as well. That was a move. We lost Brooke. Yanya is through clean. Now we saw Natsuki Tani drop the top here because of pump. So Yanya knows she has to top. She has two moves in, and she's, I mean, she's, she can't even reach it. Goes oh, up well. with a right hand, pumps. Come Don't on, Yanya, clip, clip. <laughs> Right, she clips. 47 ish yeah. is the clock there. So we're going <laughs> to we'll right keep a note on. of that. <laughs> right, so Yanya completes it in 47 as the sun, look at that behind the mountains. It's pink, just gorgeous. It's gorgeous. pink hour, that's what we call it here in Chamonix. And Yanya gets lowered down towards the ground as the crowd applaud. Safe for Yanya with one athlete to go. And she will join the rest <laughs> on the edge. <laughs> that's a reclimb the stage. Okay, whatever that was. <laughs> yeah, a mantle at the end, that's harsh, isn't but, it? But, but celebrating before clipping. Where's your, where's your mind, girl? <laughs> you need every second. Coach Stasher here, <laughs> saying it as it is. So let's watch Yanya again through the bottom of this route. So good from her to get that done. Had her moments, though. Yeah. A fumble we were, clip. Uh, we were shaky here. I was shaky, absolutely. <laughs> and then went up with the right hand, a quick fist pump, and then went to clip and got it in. Good work from her. Then the proper celebration came afterwards. So we have one final female athlete out on stage. It will be Natalia Grossman. Here she comes. The organizer announces it. And the American athletes will join us. She's just 21, three silvers, two bronzes. No golds, though, in a lead comp. Yeah, she struggled with the switch a bit from Boulder to, to lead. I think she struggled much more than Brooke did. Um, but, yeah, she's been progressing throughout the last three cups, so uh, she's in a good way, and I think she knows it. All right, so our last competitor is out. Natalia Grossman pulls onto the wall. Here we go. Keep an eye on the clock, remember. <laughs> it's all about speed now. It's all about speed now. You thought that was last night. You were wrong. <laughs> it's on different speed now. <laughs> so that's what she has to do. Mia Krampel, the only one not topping out so far, which is crazy. Oh, no, sorry. Nancy Kitani as well dropped the top. Yeah. On the oh, she stood on the door text a bit. She, she really likes standing on the on the plastic parts of the volume. Yeah. And um, yeah, it confuses me sometimes, like that that level of confidence. <laughs> yeah, good advert for sticky shoes, that yeah. one. So Natalia reaches up, makes the clips. And remember, the athletes have to clip all of those quick draws. They can't free solo it to the top. And they have to clip it in correct order if they Reclip. Sometimes that happens in the first two. They grab the rope from underneath and clip the second one, and then they're like up and down. They have to unclip and then reclip. But uh, yeah, if you skip, if you don't, um, if you don't clip at a certain point, you will be pulled down, and uh, you can't just keep going as much as you can. <laughs> Yeah, we've all seen mistakes like that happen in comps where an athlete climbs past the possible clipping point and is trying to reach back and under. And yes. We all get very yeah. nervous in the commentary box. I get so sweaty hands when that happens. <laughs> right, Natalia Grossman rests in that horizontal position we saw Yanya do as well. And then rocks up. All eyes focused on Natalia Grossman now. Yeah, the beautiful lead is that you can find your flow and then you can really find yourself enjoying it. In Boulder, everything happens really fast. You're up and down, up and down, up and down. But in lead, especially in the moments you're resting, you can just take a moment to breathe in and enjoy the moment. Um, I really like that. Yeah, I mean, it is the biggest stage, and this is such a jewel of an event. So Natalia gets through the orange sequence easily, not stopping for long. Gets the first toe that allows you to rest. And then how will she do this move? Will she bump the toe? She's going to, I think. Yep, there it goes. Yeah. And now 
with the other shoulder. This seems to be the easiest way to do it, although probably completely unintended. So the heel in, similar to the way Jesse had it. Sorry. Yeah, this foot on the volume is pretty solid up down there, so it's a pretty safe position. Or I think I, I like Laura's knee, but I'm pretty like surprised why not many like why not more of them at the knee bar there it seems like a pretty obvious one is that reverse heel so slightly different from natalia yeah no one else found that knee bar you're right big drop knee she eyes up the next part eyes flicking upwards she knows this is a physical sequence and it is to lock us off well, oh. get it precisely in. Then Shoulder muscles there. Getting your hand out of that cross is sometimes pretty difficult. But doesn't really know what to do with her feet there. Yeah, so lead to the feet and now into the crimps. And I would imagine she's going to find this knee bar coming up. She's good at seeing them. Two minutes, 25. Mm, maybe a bit faster than Yanya. You never know. Yeah, I think so, slightly. We'll see how much fatigue she has here. She's, she looks a bit oh. tired there. She's got she trusted from. that knee bar more than anyone else. Oh, yeah. She clipped from bad hold. Yeah, Natalia, full trust in the knee. So that will allow her to rest a little bit. She has to get out, change her hands first. She used the space for the knee, so she can't go back in the underclaim, which is a bit difficult now. Oof. Might be done too, way too difficult for for the like compared to other athletes. Yeah, so Natalia's in a good position, crosses through, getting huge support from the American team <laughs> in the background. Oh, yeah, that right, yeah, yeah, now yeah. pumps it into the quick draw. <laughs> that happens way too often. Yeah. Gate not quite closing. Natalia fighting now as she goes upwards. Yeah, she seems pretty tired up here. Now we know that these moves are droppable. This is where Brooke came off. Now she goes with a bit diff. She doesn't know what to do with her feet. So Brooke didn't have her feet well positioned. All the other athletes bumped their left foot immediately after placing the right. And she just doesn't really want to do it. This is the thing about those weird underclings that you have to like twist your body so much. And push your legs up. Big move, and Natalia goes down. Ah, oh, Stasha, you were right. She never looked comfortable in that position mm. going up to the crimp. She dropped it at the same spot as Brooke, unfortunately, so yeah. Well, Natalia is outside of the top three as well, but that means that Yanya Garnbrett takes another gold, and she's on stage. I'm watching her now, and she seems so relaxed about it as well. Well, we'll wait for the confirmation. The spotlight is now fully on Yanya on the left as we watch Natalia Grossman undo the knot. Always a bit of a battle after you pumped. Fell on that final sequence of holds. Had to press through. That was the rest. And this was that moment. That left foot wasn't quite she there. She was hesitating too much. So like everyone else did right, left, and then up. And you have to do a little drop knee or, or just to twist your hips a bit but fortunately we lost her before the top well there are our women and Yanya Garnbrett takes victory once again that's three out of three for her and the season clean sweep that a lot of people thought she was going through this year. That is still on for Yanya Gaumbrett. So we had four tops tonight. Three above 40 and 137 hold. Now, but Stasha, you have the task of interviewing that lady there, Yanya Gaumbrett. So I'll say goodbye to you. Come back and join me in the commentary box soon. Uh, yeah, best see you later. <laughs> So the women leave the stage. Yanya Garnbrett takes yet another victory for her fantastic performance.
The sun fully gone from our mountains now. Gray in the background, gray and white. As we reset for the men's competition. The men's route on the left-hand side, that yellow and black volumes you can see. Well, let's have a look at confirmation of those results. Yanya Gambret with a top, Laura Rogera and Sheon So, Jesse Piltz, all the top four with tops and count back deciding that result for the women. Natsuki Tani after that on 45 plus, Natalia Grossman 43, then Brooke Rabatu, and then finally Mia Krampel, who fell lower on the wall. Yanya Gambret, I mean, what do you say about her in terms of that performance? Dominant streak, of course, didn't do the whole of the Boulder season, deciding to focus on the lead. Did the first comp in Maringen and won that. Then Natalia Grossman began her reign of dominance in the 2022 season, where she walked away with the overall victory. And then when lead returned, well, so did Yanya Garmbret. And what a return it's been so far for her. Three out of three, Innsbruck, Villars and Chamonix to finish things off. Great victories from her. The roots topped by four of the women. Four not quite making it, but certainly not soft, but on the easier side for the women here tonight. And that meant, though, that mistakes were counted savagely against them. Had to be smooth and clean through those sequences. And all of those top four managed that. So, speed wall on the left. We had the finals for speed the other evening go back and watch that if you've missed it and then our lead wall in the center and uh it's this small matter of Mont Blanc in the background that far peak on the left hand side of your screen and that's the normal route up the mountaineering route starts on the right hand skyline or well, starts you have to do quite a lot of walking to get to that point and the climb up the ridge, and then you drop down and back up again to the snow-capped peak in the middle, across the ridge, and onto the summit of Mont Blanc on the left. Dangerous mountain, one that attracts climbers and mountaineers throughout the world to attempt it. There's a pretty fitting backdrop to our climbing competition here this evening. Glaciers tumbling down as well. Well, Stash is backstage, and let's hear what she has to say to Yanya Gambret. Yanya, massive congratulations, another win. So how did the route feel? Did you feel flowy, or did you have any moments that shook you a bit? Um, actually, I felt flowy. Like, usually I'm more nervous when I know that a lot of girls before me already topped, but this time I was kind of super calm and relaxed, and I just climbed, like, with a, with a little bit of caution, uh, because I knew that I need to top the route. Um, but, yeah, it was easy. <laughs> yeah, well, we know that all, most routes are easy for you, but you probably knew that you have to have a fast time. Why did you wave before you clipped? <laughs> I didn't wave. <laughs> you were congratulating. Well, yeah. celebrating a bit. Yeah. No, actually, actually, I don't know. I didn't want to make any mistakes, and I just needed to climb yeah, a bit it was, slower. It yeah, was, it was a really good climb, Yanya. Um, Thank you. Yeah, you feeling good for the next comps after come? Oh, definitely. Right now, I'm really excited to go back home to fall back into a routine a little bit, and yeah. then uh, I'm excited for Brian Son. Yeah, massive performance. Congratulations again, Yanya. Thank See you. See you soon. <laughs> well, thank you to Stasha. <laughs> Lovely questions there. Oh, why did you wave? That's going to go down in history. I like that one. Coach Stasha instructing Yanya there. Well, darkness has fallen on our stadium, and we wait for the men to join us for the finals. It's not quite as dark as that here in the stadium. The lights illuminating the wall and the audience, but you can see how packed the audience is into the stadium. And we will have the presentation for the men coming up soon. Nine men will compete here this evening. And we'll be welcoming them out shortly onto that stage.
And in fact, here they go. And Stasha, Stasha is back with me in the commentary box. <laughs> How was Yanya? Yeah, Yanya was like, oh, actually, I was first time I was nervous, and I was actually giggling before, like behind the stage. Usually, I'd be, you know, super focused, but now I was just like, oh, this is all so funny. I have to top, you know. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, you're getting top for this, right? I'm like, oh yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, here are the men. Natsuki Tani comes out. Sorry, Taisei Homa comes out onto the stage. That's Natsuki Tani. Natsuki already climbed. Oh, jeez, my brain melts. So, Taisei Homa is out. Last week's winner in Vilas. And look, he's got this style where he continuously looks so nervous on the wall. <laughs> I want to go give him a hug, and then he somehow just keeps on going. He's got this amazing ability. Uh, he also looks a bit nervous now, but uh, well, that Hamish! Man doesn't. Hamish MacArthur yes. runs out. This is his first final, so whatever he does here tonight will be a PB. Oh, he's so happy looking at him. <laughs> it really is. He, look, he's been working for this for a long time. Mm. I know he wants to win the Olympics. He told me as much. That's pretty much his only focus. Yeah. So uh, it starts here, I guess. Yeah, that's that's where it starts. He's had a good season in bouldering. Not a bit unlucky, I'd say. Um, but as I said, the field is so strong this year. It's like we never thought it would be like this. Like everyone improved, and you always think you're in your best shape ever, and then suddenly everyone else is as well. And uh, you just have to fight with all that. <laughs> well, Sasha Lehman is back in a final. He's had a victory before, but we haven't seen him on this big stage for a while. And Yannick Floe, just, I mean, what is going on with Yannick Floe? He's just making so many finals. Yeah, he he had an injured foot, I think even broken foot at the beginning of the year. And uh, this is where he kind of gave up on his bouldering season and he was massively training just for lead because with a broken foot, he couldn't jump so much. But then it turned out that he was actually pretty okay with it. And uh, then he was drawn into the comps uh, when the season already kind of started. Um, so he joined the team two or three comps in and then, well, had his first gold as well. And uh, he was already prepared for lead and suddenly, well, he's in, in finals all the time. Yeah, he's doing well. Sam Avazu from France. And then that was Satoni Yoshida from Japan. And then representing Slovenia, Luca Potica comes out. Someone you know pretty well. Not too well. Okay. He's from a different side, part of Slovenia, actually. He's from the west side. So we didn't have a chance to train uh, a lot together. And well, he started performing really well when I already moved to Munich. So I didn't really get the chance to, to get to know him well. But he seems like a very, very cool guy and uh, a very, very good climber. And then Adam Ondra onto the stage. He's been missed, it's got to be said. It's nice for him to be back, and it looks like he's having fun as well out there. Yeah, he's one of those people who's always in shape, you know. You, you can rarely catch Adam out of shape. I mean, he doesn't appear in comps so often, but when he does, he's just there to win. Yeah, I think he's coming. I'm pretty sure he's competing in the European Champs, so this is almost maybe a bit of a practice before that to get uh, himself maybe. into it. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps that is the case. He was also in the European Cup in Prague. The, the bouldering cup. I mean, of course, it's his country. Uh, kind of has to be there, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think he, he won there, as from what I can yeah, remember. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Um, and then Sean Bailey, the last athlete out, who does look very nervous out there, <laughs> breathing heavily. Like not. <laughs> we can go. Yeah, it's a big finals list. Yeah, nine well, men. Nine men. So they'll leave the stage, and we'll welcome out our first athlete in a couple of minutes. Well, this was earlier on this evening. You can tell by the light difference, the men and women observing the route at the same time. There is Yannick Floe checking it out, and Adam Ondra with Sasha Lehman and Hamish MacArthur. And interestingly, Adam and Hamish are the, uh, the same heights. So by being the same height, it does help to <laughs> read the route together. Hamish is tall. <laughs> it's uh, tall people read bit as with tall people. Yeah. It's like <laughs> That helps you more. Like short guy is not going to give you useful bit. <laughs> and then Team Japan and Hamish. Well, Hamish is jumping around all over the place. I think he's super excited to be it. He was uh, almost a triple world champion 
He won the, uh, in Voronich, he won the bowler for the youth and the lead for the youth, and then was one move off winning the senior lead in Moscow. So he came very close. Yes, very, very talented guy. Um, I'm really excited to see this finals tonight. I think it's going to be super fun to watch. I think so too. Well, that is the leaderboard. Taisai Homer will be out first. He qualified last, last week's winner, of course. And then Sean Bailey out last because he qualified in first position. But a lot of the top four men all on tops, which is interesting. And of course, count back to semi-finals and quali where I think 11 men got double top. So yeah. the clock is going to play a factor once more. Yes, and here, well, for four men, which, if the route is um, as toppable as the female ones was, it's going to be a very speedy comp. Sean Bailey, last year's winner here in Chamonix. After that, a really difficult men's route. <laughs> yeah, where everyone fell in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Yeah, that was it, but he found gold here, and then he found gold in Vilas as well, so Sean Bailey is definitely a possible winner here. Adam Ondra may be the favourite. Definitely the favourite. Definitely, say, yeah. I'm trying to be like diplomatic, yeah, yeah, yeah. but he is definitely the favourite. Definitely yeah. is the favourite. <laughs> he, he's, well, him and Yanya are the stars yeah. of this sport. You just can't not expect them to win. But then Adam Ondra was the favourite probably in the Olympics. Didn't oh, yeah. win, okay, so yeah. anything can happen here. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Don't call it too early. Yeah. But um, he is looking good. <laughs> Adam, you know, I mean, he's been climbing on out uh, on Real Rock a lot, but a load of 9A pluses, I think some 9Bs as well. And we know that's his kind of preferred training. So he seems relaxed in the zone. Yeah, although competition climbing is mm, so different, like severely different from rock climbing. It, it forces you into no rest positions, into like these ambiguous volumes and screw on holds and more dynamic moves. And, and you need this transition, but um, I'm sure that Adam has sufficient training in like both, even though he gets enough already on the 9As and, and more. Well, Adam will come at the end. Right now, Tai Sai Homer is underway. And he had this semi-final run where it looked like he was falling off everything and somehow he kept going. He's got this engine in him that keeps driving forward. Yeah. Yes, there are some people like that that have this, you think, infinite endurance. They could do thousands of moves. Um, they do struggle on more difficult ones, but they even, like, if they find their way out, they're going to keep going. Like Jesse Grouper is like this, and and he just keeps going. <laughs> yeah, people are expecting to see Jesse Grouper in this final here. He touched the edge of the wall and got yeah, counted down. This happened three or four times in the qualifications um, because the roots on the edges were really close to the edge, and sometimes you had a flag, and uh, yeah, he touched touched the edge uh, unwillingly and. Uh, that's where you just got downgraded. Yeah, so we won't see him climb, but Tai Sai Homer is underway. 13 is his score. If you're just joining us, welcome to Chamonix. This is the lead finals. We've had the women, we're on to the men, and I have Stasha Geo here in the commentary box with me, calling all the action as we watch Tai Sai Homer going upwards. And you see the wall suddenly lit up <laughs> by the yeah. spotlight. <laughs> it's got, it got dark out of a sudden here. It did, didn't it? Uh, and the temperature has dropped. It's cool. It's good sending temps. Yeah. <laughs> and Tai Sai Homer is on the pinches. And it's not as cold as it was in Villar for qualification, so it's perfect conditions. Now, this move coming up is a real shouldery one. He comes through the pinches, and he's heading towards that stacked ball-shaped volume. It's not the best angle to see it from here, but there's a edge on it, and there it is. He's yes. on a black hold. A tiny little foothold out there, and these crimps on the volume lower are really small. So Taisai in a resting position, checks out the clock, which is down towards his left. No spectacular jumps in this comp. Um, which is kind of refreshing to see. You can't have that all the time. And when you had, we had jumps in both men's and women's route in Villar, and sometimes you need a bit of a rest from that and have some good old classic lead. Yeah, this is like grinding it out, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a route. 
it is cool to see. Yeah, the women's had a huge jump in it. Well, Tysai Homa is finding a great resting position. He'll be able to recover from this well. Seems like men have a bunch of rests here. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Very whoever, unusual. Whoever asks your question has <laughs> yeah. been answered. Yeah. Men can do it too. Yeah. So Tysai Homa is sideways, right hand side towards the audience. Then he goes into a pinchy section to put his feet way to the left and it goes into a very powerful crux. Yeah, a sudden step up here. Thuggy moves, comes into the pinch, but he's looking good at the moment. And he's into the head wall. Or he will be in a sec. He's getting hyped. Yeah, so blocked crimp, he's got to be accurate. That's where his right hand is. There it is, you can see. You've got to be so accurate on that. Out to the left. Oh, such a massive compression move. This volume is really round and it doesn't give you much to work with. He seems to be controlling it so well. Look at that. Oh. Yeah, there's nothing to hold on to. And then a big heel up high. Tyson Homer stretched out near the top of the wall. It drops down underneath now the green teal volume. How can it be green teal? The teal volume. <laughs> One. Now has to cross in. Yeah, I mean, this is complex route for the men. Wanders all over the place. And it goes left and right, and it's not even close to the top yet. It's still on the head wall, but let's do a little traverse, little jibs out there. Look at this little glimpse. Oh. Matches, or he'll build the black dish. Oh no, into the jib on that and then <laughs> to, to the right. Oh, it's to go really high foot. Oh, just He's one hold away from the top yeah. already. And remember though, Tai Sai Homa is a me gold medalist, so just because he's come out first, we don't really know <laughs> how hard this route is. Yes, we don't know what's going to happen. It might be, still be very difficult. He's got the ability to win comps, so. There's a little screw on inside and there's a tick mark to like guide you to it. <laughs> but he's resting so much now and he kind of has to hit the foot when he hits. Oh, he's oh, building yeah. up for a swing. Whoa. So he's got a karate kick out <laughs> left whilst he grabs that. <laughs> it's a coordination dino. Move. That's a boulder stash <laughs> going on out there. After a good 43 moves or so, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or even more. <laughs> Um, well, Taisa Homer drops the last move. Pity. And our first athlete out. That's going to be interesting. Yeah, it's like either you go, you launch with your left foot, you grab the jib in the top, and then you let your body swing, and then you land on the volume. Or you do the pogo as, as he did. Mm, I don't know which one is more efficient. Maybe he... He is, but then you have to have this contact focus of two limbs at once, and when you're pumped, your brain is also kind of pumped as well. So, and this I is a huge kick. He was onto it, but he just couldn't grab the hold well. Just let go. Yeah, it's the barn doored off to the side. So he's happy with that. Carlin do is not. The figure of eight knot, they have to use it. The athletes, I know there are a few you can use, like a bowling and other climbing. You have to use a figure eight and it does lock up like that. So interesting stuff. The first male athlete through and almost to the top. Eight more to go. And that speed wall is where we saw the world record get beaten once more by Colonel Katabin, <laughs> five minutes dead. But it's really funny that all the world records have been broken in the qualification. Yeah. It's like when you see the fastest times, then it's, it's the guy didn't even make the, the next no, round fell, after the, yeah. he fell. And yeah. I think it had kept happening the last couple of comps. He breaks the world record in qualities and just can't get through in the knockout. What yeah. a crazy game of speed. It is, yeah. Well, it changes from a, yeah, from the clock to a race. Right, Hamish MacArthur is out. Let's see what he can do. If he, yeah, so he's a, so Hamish MacArthur, 20 years old. And if he makes 
the podium here tonight. He will be the first British athlete to do so in 28 years. So, big undertaking for Hamish MacArthur. History is against him on this. He's certainly up and coming in the British team. And we haven't had a male lead climber who's got Hamish's potential for a while on Team GB. Yeah, especially for combined. So he's underway, but looking a little nervous on this bottom section here. It's a toe and a heel. Hamish will need to settle these nerves down. He looks so excited. Yeah, he might be confused in the betas and in all these black and yellow jibs. It's all black and yellow. Hamish needs to find his flow in Chamonix. Comes up into the underclink. Turns the heel with the toe down towards the ground, locking it in. A uh, bit clumsy with the clips. Certainly slow. Hamish doesn't want to fall here early. I know his local climbing wall is watching this broadcast. They sent me a message, so he's got support from back at home. Makes the clip underneath. And he'll be well, aiming for that rest. Fully though. Okay, oh, no. there it is. <laughs> there Hits it, it in. Oh. It happens to me so often. It's like that I have to clip and then pull the rope down because it goes only halfway. <laughs> yeah, you want the gate to be completely shut. Yes. So Hamish gets a heel in. Now coming up, looking a little better from him as he starts to get his teeth into the proper climbing. But he's having to snatch, nearly drop that clip. Hope he gets some good rhythm now in this powerful section. Because, you know, there's hard heart and there's weird heart. And the weird heart is where, maybe because he's also really tall, might find himself getting more tired than the others. But then Tyce Homer made these moves look smoother. He's fairly tall as well. Yes, yeah. Yes. Oh, Hamish. Oh. oh, he's left himself go way too far out there and he has to pull back in. Bit shaky there. Super shaky. Well, he shakes out. That was a moment. He's trying to one armor himself <laughs> yeah, back in. Exactly. He was like with nails on oh. the left rim. So it did look spectacular for sure. <laughs> Hope someone got a shot of that. Well, Hamish will try to milk this rest. He's looking like these moves are hard for him. It is a hard route. It's very hard. It's a yeah. very hard route. Yeah, Tyson Hummer was, I think, deceptively good on that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't trust the first climber. Never out. trust the first climber. So Hamish is up in the rest. And after this, things just get more physical. So he needs to get something back here. Whatever he does, it will be a PB for him. Oh, yeah. look at that heel. Oh. He's got a weird heel in. Definitely helped. <laughs> yeah, it is a PB for him, and it definitely is a learning experience for sure, because he's going to have much more to come. And oh, he's got a yeah. bump underneath, which he does. Kind of grabbed the rope on the way. Yeah, it's getting in the way, isn't oh, it? Yeah. And uh, Hamish slaps out to the left. Just a bit before the head wall in the pinch section, but um, yeah, it was definitely really good and refreshing to see him in finals, yeah. Yeah, that was good. And we don't, I still don't really know what this route is, because Hamish looked like he struggled with it. Tyson Homer looked like it was easy. Yeah, I mean, with these climbers, you never know. You might see someone falling on the 10th hole, and you can also see the next five climbers stopping. It's just very unpredictable. So let's watch some highlights from Hamish here. This was down low where he still wasn't quite in a flow. And this was the move where he let those feet go. He was going for a long way there. It looks impossible, that, doesn't it? And then finally got the feet back on. You can imagine the core <laughs> screaming at you on that move. And then this was the drop down with the rope slightly in the way. And then slapping out to the left. Not enough. Right, so Hamish is done. We wait for our next athlete onto the stage. And it is Sasha Lehman. Sasha, always popular. Yeah. <laughs> he is just a really good climber. He might be a bit shorter for his, well, 
crew of, of finalists. But he is such a well-rounded athlete and, and a really good lead climber. And I'll never forget when we were competing on the European Championship in Moscow uh, in 2020 to qualify for Olympic Games. And we were both second. And we were both second because someone else was faster in the top because faster than someone other else. And uh, yeah, that was heartbreaking. And then it was heartbreaking for myself. And then seeing him on the edge of tears was even more heartbreaking for him. For me, it's like, oh. How does this happen? <laughs> yeah, you feel like Sasha's really been through it. You know, he's kind of yeah. had adversity thrown at him, and we'd like to see him succeed. So yeah. he's underway. Let's see what he can do in a final. First one of the year. He's really focused on breathing correctly and, and, and breathing well. And this is so important. You have to think about this so much. I mean, not just for top athletes, for everyone. You have to keep reminding yourself that you need to breathe continuously throughout the route. Otherwise, you might just forget to, and you will lack oxygen, and then you'll get tired, pumped, lack focus, and so on. Well, Sasha is doing well at the moment, looking a bit smoother than Hamish did on this sequence. Cuts loose to the flatty. I love these like round, um, edgy volumes. They're so comfortable. <laughs> Sasha is doing well so far. Finds a little rest. Stretches that left arm back, trying to get the pump out. And Sasha, again, experienced. He'll know, you know how to rest. He'll know, he'll keep an eye on the clock. He won't feel rushed. Yeah, he's been in finals for <laughs> long enough, yeah. So he knows what to do and how to pace his climbing, especially in such route where you have these very distinct sections of, of difficult cruxes. Because in the female route, we had more like of a continuous battle. But here in the men's, you have a hard section and a rest, and then a very different hard section, and then again, a kind of a rest, and so on. So you have like partial stories um, in the route. Yeah, and he's coming up to the well, the first chapter being closed of that story because this is the rest. And this is where Hamish did this outrageous move. But this is a long way for Sasha. And you can see with the wild swing, Whoa. how did he hold that? And he doesn't. Comes upside down. Oh, so unlucky. He tried to grab it on his way out. He was spinning in a 360. And then he tried to re-grab it with left and then kind of kick his foot. But... Unfortunately, it was too far out, and what an early fall for Sasha, really, really unfortunate. I suddenly realized the height difference, because both Tyson Helmer and uh, Hamish MacArthur are tall. There wasn't as much of a move. That was big from, Sa that from Sasha. Was... Yes. And then just got flipped. That's oh. not quite as dramatic as it looked. You get kind of turned upside down <laughs> by the rope. Oh, bummer. Yeah, so his compass finish, he goes off. Disappointed, but a good performance from him. Hamish was uh, talking through his, mo his moment on that <laughs> hold, I think. Then. It's definitely a moment up there. I think you see the mountains when you hang from it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, Yannick Floe is underway. And uh, at the beginning of the season, he didn't have the endurance. He just didn't. And now I think he's climbing himself into that endurance. He's looking yeah. better and better. Yeah, well, he also came from the bouldering season and he needed to climb himself into it. But as I said, he's well trained from before and he has a good basis. So well, each comp is a new opportunity. And I think for everyone who did the full bouldering season, I think many people did. It, it needed some transition. Yeah. And he's done well. He's, uh, he's one of only three athletes to make every single lead finals this season. Taisei Homer and Satoni Yoshida being the other two. So he's consistent. And he's, well, besides Alex Megos, the candidate for, for uh, well, Paris Olympics. He's really good and skilled and combined. And um, he was also going for the Tokyo Olympics, but uh, yeah. He didn't make the cut in Toulouse, I think. Oh, Yannick thugs his way through that sequence. That's what he does. He just he can unlock the shoulder moves, can this man? <laughs> he has really strong shoulders, this guy. I mean, 
this whole upper body is just rock solid. It's just so strong in any position. Um, so I think he's going to deal with the upcoming moves pretty well. At yeah. least I hope so. Yeah, yeah well, because after that rest, you get that sort of undercling slappy section as you work your yes. way left. And that's all, all shoulders and uh, power. So if he can get that far, I think he'll get through to the head wall. But we'll see. He's, he's a way off. Yeah. So into the grey pinches now. Gets the heel locked in. And then this was the move where Sasha Lehman fell. Coming out towards the circular volumes. Here he goes. Sets himself up for this jump. Let's just hope he doesn't stay on one arm. <laughs> Would have been a show off, but I don't think that works. <laughs> oh, static stuff. Look at this height difference, as you said. Yeah. It's insane on this move. Gets the feet drilled in and he's through, but he needs to work out the rest here because there is one. And he's going straight through now, perhaps resting. There we go. Uh, Hamish did good with that heel on the right side. Made it much easier to switch around. Yannick's not pausing for long, though. <laughs> he likes to climb quickly. Yeah, it's really powerful, this part, and he just cruises through it, no problems whatsoever. Ah, oh, look at that. So fresh, look, this, this fast hop with his feet, that's when you see this guy's still fresh on. It's like watching someone sort of warm up on a V2 in your local gym, but this is really <laughs> difficult climbing here. Yannick Floe is on the lip of the head wall. And he's nearing Tyson Homer's high point, which is looking more and more impressive. Because this compression move, this sloper. Staying on oh, the ledge. He slips. Oh. He tried to stay on this, this metal edging between the overhang and the head wall. And you could see his foot just like slide away. I don't know if that pulled him down or not, but. This is definitely a really massively hard move. Yeah, we've seen a few, uh, someone in Vila did a similar thing. It was, uh, I think it was Natalia actually. She kind of stood in the coping and it, mm. it it's a risky thing to do because that metal looks <laughs> better, but it's yes. not very good. It's round and it yeah. sticks out, but it's, there's no friction on it. So Yannick Flory bumps left. That was the move he made look easy. And watch that right foot. Yeah, it was on the coping. Yeah. And down Yannick goes. Well, four athletes done. Let's have a look at our leaderboard. Tyser Homer, he was out first. 39 plus for him. Great so far. Yannick Floe, 29 plus in second place. Hamish McArthur, third. And then Sasha Lehman with that spectacular fall is sitting in fourth. But five athletes to go. All can change. Sam Abazu it will be out next. Then Satoni Yoshida, Luca Potica, Adam Ondra, and Sean Bailey to finish things off. So we'll have a little pause here where we catch our breath from that <laughs> pretty spectacular start. Yeah, how naive we were with that top at the bottom <laughs> I know. at the beginning. We were thinking it's easy. Well, oh, everyone will top this. Oh, well. Let's see some replays of what we've seen so far. So this was Tai Sai Homa. And I mean, really quite impressive from him. Yes, definitely. He just cruised up and we didn't even notice with what kind of ease. This is the thing about being first out and climbing really well. People don't appreciate the effort you put into it because only after you see how really how difficult it really is and how people struggle. It's like when you're after everyone and you go through these sections easily, then you see like, oh wow, this guy's really strong. But when you go out first and do all of this, people don't know how hard it is, and uh, you just uh, well don't get enough confidence as you should. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll pick him up, and that was the move where Hamish did an outrageous sort of catch in midair. He'd always call to pull him in, but he fell on the slaps left. And down he came. And Sasha Lehman, well, check out this. He had to jump far further than the others. He leapt, had a hand on, but then watched that right hand as it pings. Nearly caught with the left on the volume, but there wasn't anything to really catch out mm. there. But I'm, think, I'm just trying to think uh, analytically, obviously. Um, if Sasha could have stayed with his foot, is it the arm span or or really the general body length that prevented him from sticking the move. Yeah, maybe he just under, sort of underestimated the move, didn't give it enough, but I mean, he committed to it. Or maybe he overdid it. Yeah. Maybe he just could have tried to stay on it, 
instead of launching really hard up. Yeah, I think he just fully, yeah, maybe overcommitted to the jump. Well, it spat him off, whatever, he came down. If you're joining us, well, welcome to Chamonix. We are halfway through the men's side of the lead final. The women have climbed already. Yanya Garnbrett taking victory in that side of the competition. And now we have five men remaining to come out onto the stage. The athletes gathering on the left in armchairs. <laughs> Looking very <laughs> relaxed over there. Feels like on the beach. <laughs> It does, doesn't it? There's, well, there's no beach. <laughs> there's no beach, it's just mountains yeah. and chilly weather. So Sam Abazu is out, his first finals here tonight, and he looks so good in semifinals. Yeah, definitely. And this season he improved a lot. We saw him in Boulder semifinals and Innsbruck before. And uh, yeah, now he's in lead finals. I think lead is his more like preferred discipline, perhaps, in the recent years. Um, I can't really tell, but uh, he's definitely doing really well now. Yeah, certainly a wild card into this final. I have to see because everyone copes with their first finals differently. Yes, well, some may find it an aspiring opportunity and they climb better than they usually would. And some find it very mm, stressful and they get confused and uh, maybe too secure. But who knows? I think yeah. he looks pretty good here. Yeah, he is climbing really quickly through the bottom. And obviously, we're in Chamonix, France. This French <laughs> audience is uh, going to be cheering their man on all the way as he cuts loose and campuses through to Stasha's favorite hold. Yes. <laughs> it's the biggest hole in the roof, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so he eyes up the pinches now. Oh, doesn't rest much. He yeah. just keeps going. Yeah, he is. He was looking very smooth in semis, and he's going to continue that form. Where's the rope? The rope got stuck in. Yeah, reaches down and fumbles that clip a little, but now he moves yeah. on. High heel into the pinches, kicks the legs out to the right. Drop knee on the left. Sometimes the fast strategy isn't the best. You get tired quickly. You might, you maybe should have used some rest before because you just run into a hard section without carefully thinking about it. But yeah, here reaching is definitely the best version. Oof, that was sketchy. Yeah, well, he's in now. Will he rest here? Oh, it looks like he's going to get a knee bar. There's not a lot to be had. No, I think Ruth said has made sure you don't knee bar. Because <laughs> yeah. Adam, maybe Adam will fight. He's master of knee bar. <laughs> It's kind of flat though, it's there, you can see there's nothing, there's no edge to really knee bar onto. Yeah, it's far away as well. Yeah, so not, not to be had. And I think he's going to discover this rest in a sec as he moves across. It's not much of one, and again, Taisai Homa just milked it beautifully, that rest. Okay. Some with pictures again. Oh, cuts loose on the pinch, he's got to drop the right hand under, watch the rope, it can get in the way. Oh, oh, nearly oof. slips and does slip. Yeah, well. That was about where Hamish yeah, fell. Yeah, I think it's the same. Hamish fell on that move as well. So we've got to see if uh, Sam is going to get the plus or not. Yeah, so uh, because Sam was out later, if he has got the same score, he will jump Hamish into third position. It was good. It was fast climbing. Decided to camp us through and reset with the feet. Found a bit of a rest here, but no one has rested as much as Taisei Helmut. <laughs> and then this pinch, I mean, it looked physical, didn't it? And that that screw in is, is fully on the no-tex. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's like an intermediate part screwed on onto another dish. It's like a dish on a dish, and then a jib on a dish on a dish. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for that. No, that that's clear. <laughs> So, Satoni Yoshida comes out, and if we talk about Flo, this man's got it in spades. He looks so good when he's moving between sequences. Hasn't got a medal, though, yet. Fifth is his best finish in the lead. He's 18 years old. 
many young athletes nowadays. <laughs> yeah, it's, they're certainly getting younger and younger. And they are, just to confirm people who are asking, they are titanium metal patches on his arms. He uses those for uh, some kind of sort of muscle energizer or something. I've heard that some Japanese use those, like tapes or flasters or, or patches. Um, hmm. I don't know, never looked into that. Yeah, it's like one of those things where it's psychological. Actually, it does make a difference. Who knows? But that's what they are, because everyone keeps asking me. <laughs> so, Satoni Yoshida underway, stands on the dual text with the right foot up to the black. Big dish with the screw on. Locks in the left heel, and he'll rest almost immediately. It's pretty weird, this first section you have to cross in like two or three times move your feet around all these jibs that are placed on very unusual spots on the volume like usually you don't have to cross through from an inside to the outside of, of such a dish you know so it's a bit counterintuitive yeah and they're kind of pushing you back from the wall as well as yes, you're crossing yeah, through it's, yeah, exactly. it's not a nice as a start for the men unsettling for them so he's into the underclings. This is where we saw. <gasps> oh, oh, but he slips. Oh, no. Oh, that was just a straight mistake from Satoni Yoshida. Oh, you can just see how disappointed he is with that. How did that happen, even? I mean, it was because he was, looks like he was thinking about jumping out to it, started the move, and then just went. Ah, oh, and he is really disappointed by that. I mean, any athlete would be falling Definitely, low. definitely. It's just not how you want to end your climb. It's like you haven't even had a chance to try really hard. Oh. It's, it's like he hesitated mid-movement. Mid mid-move, yeah. And then he already started losing the other I don't even know. Yeah, it's like he sort of jumped, I still don't then hesitated. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I still can't. don't understand it fully. Ah, oh, so disappointment for us, Tony Yoshida. We will move on straight away. Shocker for him. Wow, this men's final is shaping up to be a dramatic one. Tai Sayoma came out immediately and almost topped it, and everyone else is struggling. Yeah. But let's see if this young man has something to show. He's already 20. Oh, why do I think he's younger? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got two silvers. I'm pretty sure it was in Slovenia last year, so he is coming. He's making an impression on this lead circuit. And he would have known that Satoni Yoshida fell fairly early because he would have come out quicker than he would yes, have thought. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So he's probably going to be cautious about each sequence because um, you can make a mistake basically anywhere. Yeah, and it's hard not to be in your head in this oh. moment because you're thinking like, oh, that's interesting. What, what is this? This is the intuitive way of dealing with this dish which I was talking about earlier. It's like, this is the way you want to go. Oh, but then have, has everyone else went the wrong way? So yeah. <laughs> we'll, never, we'll never know. No, exactly. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's usually multiple ways through sequences, or sometimes yeah. there is. So Luca will rest. Yeah, has it got in his head? Because he knows there might be a tricky move down low and maybe he's second guessing himself, wondering about where it is. Oh yeah, that's the, the trap of the mind. Yeah. <laughs> he's got to put it all to one side and get on with it. So here he goes. This is where we lost Satoni Yoshida and suddenly it makes you look at the moves differently, oh, doesn't it? Oh, it makes me shake now and makes Luca. Oh. <gasps> He cuts this oh. campusing through. Okay. Oh, so maybe this is what happened earlier. He tried a campus, didn't want to, and then just lost it before he could pull himself together. Well, he's through, but of course he doesn't know he's through this difficult <laughs> yes. move. So maybe he'll get, pick it up from the audience. But he is. Uh, but it didn't look so difficult in the earlier climbers. We we just thought it's just just a move, you know. Well, he's into the pinches now. He made a bump down low. Now he gets the yellow jibs, the screw-ons. I'm Makes feeling really stressed right now. <laughs> Sorry, I don't Steph. know. It's like this route has seen so many different falls that I'm just now... 
yeah. what is going to happen? <laughs> yeah, it's true. There's not any one sequence that is the stopper. It could be anywhere. Yes. Right, well, he finds a good rest. Comes up. He's not using the rest, though, and then he will cross under and hopefully get his feet sideways and take a second to shake out and breathe. Through with his feet. Well, he is the rest of Taisei Homa. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah, looking very casual. So he's uh, found it. We'll no. shake out a little. Doesn't look pumped. Maybe that's the key to pass the next section fluently. I don't know. <laughs> oh, some pumping the crowd. Yeah, and they respond. The crowd was <laughs> in shock after that last oh, time. Oh, yeah. Definitely everyone's just shivering around here. Oh, look at that heel. So high heel for Luca, and then he'll drop down, making a different sequence. Then he has to unlock it. It's really awkward Oof. as the rope nearly gets in the way. This was... Oh, oh slaps barely out. does it. Oof. That's where we lost Toe Hamish. Hook. Does he want to tow? Heel hook doesn't feel secure. There he goes. Well, that was unorthodox, but he is through as he gets stood up. He just has to keep fighting to try to pass Yannick for... Well, that was a good battle, wasn't it? He looked oh, like yeah. he was coming off all over the place. Now he's up into the head wall. This yeah. is where we lost... Uh, trying to be precise, but if you see his elbows up, chicken winging up here. This is a term we use when someone's pumped, and there we lose the same place as Yannick. Yeah, the elbows went up, didn't oh, they? Oh, yeah. As he slapped for that. And the problem is he was so low on, that, uh, on the sloper, he was never going to be able to stick that. No, definitely not. But that has helped his score, so things flick around once again as we're into our last couple of athletes out in the men's final. So he's currently in second place. So that means if any of the remaining two make a mistake, you can be on the podium. So he might <laughs> be walking away with a medal oh, here tonight. <laughs> so that was the move that Yoshida, uh, Satoni Yoshida had trouble with. No problems for Luka Potija. Cuts loose, found a better rest in a sec, horizontal on the wall. Hyped the crowd just for, well, I mean, why not? And then this was the move that got him. He was always going down, went for the plus. Well, there's a big reaction from the crowd because behind that curtain is Adam Ondra as he enters the Chamonix stage. So Adam Ondra is back. And we are really looking forward to this because he will definitely solve some cruxes differently than others. He will. Can he find that knee bar? Yeah. <laughs> will he make it work? Can we see a top of this route tonight? I really hope we do. It would be a pity if we don't. Now, will we see the fluid Adam Ondra or the nervous Adam Ondra? Because he sometimes lets that competition tension get to him. Ah, uh, you never know. We'll see, I guess, already in the first crux. <laughs> yeah, so he's underway. And that's his task, the top of the wall. He needs to get through the blue on your graphic, all the way into the yellow and hopefully to the top. And the leaderboard, Tysa Hama, 39 plus, Luca Potica, 29 plus, and Yannick Floyd, the same score, 29 plus. Count back, bumping him down the order. This looks pretty smooth now. I think it's, he's on a good way. Yes, the fluid Adam Ondra is here. So, crossing under, lovely stuff from Adam. Here is that little campus move. What? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, and Adam will like an early physical move just to settle him down. Question is, are the power screams going to come out here tonight in show? Oh, we'd love to hear that. I would like that. <laughs> now we have mics all over the wall. It's going to pick up everything. It's <laughs> very true, yeah. <laughs> Right, so he's into the pinches. Quick climbing from Adam at the moment. So Adam crosses through and then he pops out. Such a difference. I keep just replaying in my head the fall of Sasha. It's oh, so bitter. I find the same bit as Hamish. Yeah, that heel, that back heel move. And then Adam will rest as well. And he does rest, so he chalks up and shakes out. He's immediately recognized that this is the good point to do that. Yeah, it looks like such a bad hole from down here, but when you get the upper angle, 
looks much better. <laughs> so weird. Yeah, the angles can be deceptive. The camera, depending on where it's positioned, can make things look very different. Adam swings over precise on that left toe, and he's got to be, and quickly drops down with no hesitation. And then bumps up oh, to the slopey pinch. He doesn't even bump to the intermediate. Yeah. He just keeps going, locks off. Well, Adam Andre is on form, it's clear. This can he top impressive. it out? Wow, really impressive. High lift. I mean, it's just like a, it's like a ladder at the moment for Adam. Oh, he didn't try to use the foot, didn't quite get it. Oh, we, we saw that massive heel hook from, from Taisei. And now, look at this, walk in the park. <laughs> Adam Andre breathing hard, though, focusing that intensity he brings to every climb he does. It's three and a half minutes to go. This is so ridiculous. <laughs> Cruising at the moment, he drops back down with a drop knee to rest. Squats down, almost on his heel. He knows it's a tricky section now, and he's ready to deal with it. A crimp inside the dish, and then another to the right. Oh, Adam under in full flow. As he comes through, no more clips needed for him. And now this is the move that got Taisei Homer. Will Adam be the first athlete to stop it out? He eyes it up, a little kick, and oh, no, it's not. He went through the double line. <laughs> oh, this is so amusing. Well, I'll tell you what, if ever he needed to pause, I think that might have been the moment just yeah. to reset, because it looked like he sort of rushed the move a bit. He just said, oh, I'll just go for it. Yeah, and then kind of missed it with both. Feet and air, so, oh, I don't know what I should have done there. <laughs> but that should bump him up the order as we wait for confirmation of it because he's coming out later on. <laughs> Does that the cameraman wanting a fist bump? It is. He's <laughs> Come on, don't leave him hanging oh, there. No. <laughs> that would have been iconic, wouldn't it? Mm. Well, Adam Andre nearly tops out. Doesn't quite, but he nods to the crowd as he undoes his knots. And we'll wait for the score and see what's happening with that. But he should be up at the top. Yeah, I mean, he definitely had the plus towards the top. And since he ranked better than uh, Taisei Homa, he should be in the first place. Yeah. So Adam joins us. Let's see that. He, I mean, he was in full flow there, wasn't yeah, it? Every move that It looked so good. Effortless from Adam. Oh, look at that heel. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Cross through into the dish. And then he saw the rest early, used it well, and then, yeah, missed the intermediate here. Yeah, this was so impressive, so powerful. Goes up and then straight on. Oh, look at this. He missed it. He, he went with his hips a bit too far away from the wall. Um, yeah. Well, Sean Bailey is last out. Let's see if he can get to the top of the podium. He's got two goals. They came last year. One in Vilas. One in Chamonix. Can he make it the double here tonight? <laughs> the double Chamonix victories. Yeah, let's see. This this route is a lot to to take and to deal with. <laughs> yes, so much to it. Right, so Sean Bailey underway. He'll calm himself down. And that is, yeah, there it is, confirmation. Adam Onder, 39 plus, will jump Taisai Homer. So only Sean Bailey can stop Adam winning gold now. <laughs> I'm suddenly so nervous. So Sean is underway. Gets stood up onto those black screw-ons. Feels and looks pretty solid for now, but Soon the powerful section comes up and the little campus move. Yeah, and we know you can fall here. Uh, well, well, you can fall anywhere, but you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't. And he is going to campus easily through. You can see how differently they campus this move. Some of them use more the jump from their feet from the bottom. Some of them stop the swing and then campus using brute force. This is a bit of a less efficient way of stopping the move and then campusing up because you use all your power to stop the swing and then you even have to pull up. But if you use a little bit to jump from below, you can kind of swing your way into the next hole with just a little bit of a pull. 
So Sean Bailey gets the pinches in, bumps it again, gets the heel as he rocks up. Big support from Team USA and the crowd as he continues. And now the move. Oh, oh. he lost the foot, but <laughs> hopefully it doesn't bother him too much. Yeah, he held it. <laughs> His oh. heart will be beating though. <laughs> They're all on the edge here. <laughs> but will that mistake matter later on though? Because psychologically and physically he's got to recover from that. Will he find the rest? Switches the feet, does rest, straight arms. But oh, not for long. Not really, he just keeps going. Oh, that's the bummer. Seems okay for now. It's a very difficult move here. Oh. Catches the bump, he uses the intermediate, and he's flowing at the moment, but should he have rested for longer? Has he got the endurance to keep it together on the head wall? Now this block crimp comes up with the bump to the left. Does he have it in him to finish this route? Oh, no, there wasn't really a toe to be had there. Oh, oh he's messing it up. He's going to jump. jump. This is no. oh, it's not going to be enough for Sean Bailey. So he stays in fifth position, which means Adam Ondra on his comeback comp will win here yes. tonight. And Heise Toma in second place. And now, if I'm not wrong, Sean Bailey gets the third place because they they fell on the same move. Yes, they did. Yeah, yeah. so he should so be. Yeah, he should be there. I think the score wasn't updated yet. Although Luca well, Potocar had the top and the top and the top, yeah. so now the time will decide who gets the third place. Okay, well we'll wait for confirmation yes. of that. It will come up on the screen. <laughs> let's not judge too early. No, the calculators are out. The judges are making that decision. Well, let's watch Sean Bailey again coming left. And then he wasn't quite high enough on it. He, he went for it as if it was um, a jog, but it's, it's like you can't cut your feet there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you can do that. Right, so you just have to reach it. <laughs> you just reach it. It's always the, the, the solution, just reach. Uh, it's good to hear that between the athletes. So from, oh, so from now, currently he doesn't have the plus yet, but he is much faster. Well, that is the... The leaderboards as it stands. Adam Ondrin first, Tysai Homer second, Luca Pottinger third, Yannick Floe fourth, Sean Bailey fifth, Hamish MacArthur sixth, Sam Azbazu, Sasha Lehman, and Sir Tony Yoshida make up that final nine. Yeah. Well, what do you say about Adam? I mean, he was clearly off form, was he? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Not much to say there, yeah. but uh, basically what we expected, but we did expect the top, though. <laughs> So Taisei Hama has this little ceremony where they get introduced to the audience. The proper podium will come in a minute. And Adam Ondra comes onto the stage, fist pumping in the air. He takes his first victory of the season. And I think he's happy to be back. Yeah, I think he's enjoying himself a lot now. And I'm glad to see Luca Potocar back on the podium as well. It is another medal for him. Adam loving being on stage. I really do think he's missed it. Stasha. You go and interview Adam, come back and tell me how he is, and uh, yeah. I'll see you in a couple of minutes. See you in a bit. <laughs> so the athletes leave the stage, and that will be the end of our men and women's final here tonight. What a men's route that was, eh? All types of drama. Taisei Homer coming out so early and making it look easy. We thought the route might be a bit undercooked. <laughs> I think me and Stasha, it turned out not to be the case because vicious sections throughout it. And it was Adam Ondra who managed to pull his way through to the top. No top for him, but close enough. Jumping Taisei Homer due to count back, although he got the same score. The crowds start to leave the stadium. A lot will stay for the podium, though, and the party that will come afterwards. And why not? Because Chamonix is in the party spirit here tonight. The balconies around the Place de Montblanc are stacked with people. The hotel's busy. The Chamonix sunshine has been bathing us all evening. Well, Stash is back with Adam. Let's hear from them.
Adam, what a climb that was. Congratulations. Thank How you. do you feel being back here and back at the top? I mean, I definitely needed some break after the Olympics, but now I feel it's just the time that I got hungry for the competitions. And I think I picked up the best lead World Cup on the circuit, which is Chamonix, and it was a great decision. Yeah. I enjoyed <laughs> climbing here in Chamonix, and I love climbing when it's actually dark. That's when the, the time is still here in Chamonix, and hearing all the crowd behind the bag is just unbelievable. Uh, it's good conditions, good vibes <laughs> out here, and the route seemed really fun. Like It had different sections and different like powerful moves. You dealt really well with that. Yes, uh, I think the more complex the routes, the better for me. I especially like the pinchy section in the, uh, yeah. uh, on the top of the overhang. Then I was kind of maybe disappointed that it was like really just pure, pure crimp fest. But um, I was pretty happy that I could actually recover a little bit before the last crimps. And then the last dino, I actually... Yeah, tell me more. <laughs> I actually was pretty sure from the observation I can just reach it. But yeah. it's not possible. It, it felt like that also from watching that reaching is uh, an yeah. idea. But uh, yeah, Taisei tried to pogo with one hand up yeah. and the left, you went with the double Because uh, I catch. actually thought it's a jug and I was almost <laughs> sure I would do it. But then the hole was actually pretty yeah, bad. It it's a like a scooper with a small, really yeah. slopey chip on the top of that. That's something I did not expect at all. <laughs> oh, well, the surprise there it is. Yeah, well done once again. Really Thank happy you. to see you back here and your best and uh, looking forward for more. Thank you so much. Well, thank you to Adam. Great to have him back. And that is our top nine. Awesome stuff. Well, I'm going to say goodbye to Stasha Gale, who's joined me in the commentary box while we wait for the podium. Stasha, great podium. Sorry, not great podium, great finals for <laughs> it us. It is a great podium and a very, very exciting finals. It was uh, fun to chat with Adam now and, and to see how he felt about the route. Um, a bummer to see that Luca Potocar was actually fourth in the end, uh, but nevertheless, I think this was a very good finals now. It was. Well, Stasha, thank you for joining us. You go and enjoy the party atmosphere in Chamonix, <laughs> and uh, hopefully you'll be in finals, but maybe you'll come and join me soon, so thank yeah, you very much. Yeah, hope so. It was really, really fun and good to be back here. <laughs> See you later, Stasha. See you thank around. You. Well, thanks to Stasha Geo for joining me. Brilliant stuff. And I just wanted to correct something. I think I uh, might have done down Will Bosey when I was talking about uh, British lead climbers, because, of course, Will Bosey, an incredibly impressive climber, following as Hamish follows his footsteps onto this big stage. So uh, big up to Will Bosey as well. Well, the award ceremony will come as we wait for the stage to be clear. That is our lead wall that was in action on uh, Friday. Do go back and watch that if you haven't already. It was an exciting final all round. It's sad to see the Chamonix come, come to an end. Been a good one. Both the, uh, well, the men's route, I think, perhaps had the edge slightly in terms of drama here this evening. The women was certainly entertaining. And Yanya Gambre coming through to take victory once again for her. Well, the award ceremony will follow. The uh, organizers are just setting things up onto the stage now. The athletes will receive their medal. A little ceremony we saw, first of all, was an introduction, allowing the audience to... Uh, just see their top three and celebrate that with them. Lights flash across the wall. A bit of a disco going on out there. If you enjoyed that Natalia uh, Grossman little interview I did with her about the semi-finals, there's a longer version of that that will be appearing on the IFSE social media, so do keep an eye on that. Hopefully we'll be doing that with more athletes in the future.
Well, we are waiting for the podiums for the men and women here. The climbing has been completed, and now all we need to do is award the athletes their medals and play some national anthems across the stadium. Thank you once again for Stasha for joining me in the commentary box. Good to see her. And we'll move on soon. Brian Son in a couple of weeks. We actually get a bit of a break now. It's been back-to-back -back comps, back-to-back -back weekends. Brian Son is not next weekend, the weekend after for another lead comp. I think we're almost ready. The MC is announcing to the audience the athletes are on stage and the uh, podiums are set and ready. IFSC emblem, of course, on the speed walk. And now here we are, the women enter the stage. Laura Rogera, uh, <laughs> Yanni Garnbred and Shen So come out. There they are, highlighted in the spotlight. Yanya, where she belongs, on that top spot. She had so great performance from her, and Laura really had to battle all the way through her routes to the very end. Getting in awkward positions, working out how to get out of those positions. I think she'll be pleased with it. So the announcer calls things out and Sheon So will be first to stand up on the box. Bronze medal for her. She continues her fantastic run in the speeds in the lead season. Flowers medal in check for her work here this evening. Next up, Laura Rogera. Well, what a battle she had. Looked awkward on the initial rest. Had to fight for it all the way, and she gets a silver medal for her work. <laughs> Team Italy, are you proud tonight? And finally, the lady who won a gold medal in the Olympics. 51 medals now on the IFSC circuit and another gold medal to her name. Is there anything Yanya can't, can't do? Will she be stopped this year? Certainly not here in Chamonix. A gold medal for Team Slovenia. IFSC president having a little word with her there. True icon of our sport. So once again, the national anthem that if you watch climbing, you'll be very used to. Let's listen to the Slovenian national anthem. Another victory for Yanya Garbrett as the final notes of the anthem die in our stadium. All three will stand on the top spot and share a moment together. There's hundreds of camera phones snapping the audience.
So the women leave the stage and we'll have the men up next onto the main platform. The beat builds as we wait for the men. Adam Andre will once again be on the top spot. How many times has he stood up there? Eh? The light show continues on the wall. It's packed down here at the front of the stage. The athletes have all gathered near. The, the audience has drawn as close as possible to the barriers. Everyone trying to get as close as possible to these rock stars. Well, here we go. The men are called onto the stage to get their medals. They're out. Taisai Hama leading the way. Anna Mondra in that gold position. And Sean Bailey, as it was corrected, and Stasha said, in third place. Luca being bumped down. So that is your top three here tonight. Sean Bailey will receive his bronze, first of all. It wasn't going to be the double gold for him in Chamonix. The strong work, nevertheless, on a tricky route. Is Sean Bailey from Team USA. <laughs> and Tai Sai Hummer, well, he came out first. Worked his way through the route, found brilliant rests. Almost topped out, which would have beaten Adam if he had managed it. But it wasn't to be here tonight. Gold medal in Vila, silver medal in Chamonix. Not a bad couple of weeks work, eh? Finally, his first league comp of 2022. And clearly, he has been training, working away behind the scenes. He returns in full flow and takes the first victory of his campaign, a gold medal for Adam Ondra. He's a new father. He's a gold medalist in 2022. What a year he is having. And now we will hear his national anthem playing out as it has before many a time and will again many a time more.
So our competition draws to a close here tonight. The medals are awarded. The routes have been completed. What a night that was. It will go down in the history books. It's in the books. And we move on to Briançon for our next competition in a few weeks' time. Adam Ondra with his first gold there. And all three athletes standing together for a moment before leaving the stage and beginning the party. We will return for more action soon. I hope you enjoyed tonight's performances. Thank you for watching, everyone. Comp climbing will come back soon, don't you worry. More action in Briançon. The lead wall will be used again. And I will see you soon. Have a lovely evening, everyone.